we're all looking at. Let's go and take a listen to what she had to say during the week. Number three, I'd love to add another world title. Uh, you know, nothing would give me greater pleasure at this point in my career. Um, having said that, it's it's still anyone's game. Um, I know I've raced well here. I know I I am good at rising to the uh, the occasion that is Kona World Championships. Hopefully, I've done enough. Hopefully, I'm in you know as good a shape as I need to be. I feel everything indicates that I'm in very good shape and ready to roll. But um, you know. Who knows what the other girls will bring either. So um, it's exciting to go out there and just lay it all out there and then just see who's the strongest. So today we'll be very active on social media, the 2014 Ironman World Championship presented by GoPro. So check us out on Facebook at Facebook forward slash Ironman Try, Instagram forward slash Ironman Try, Twitter at Ironman Try and Pinterest forward slash Ironman Try. So that's where you'll find us all day long on social media and make sure that you post your favorite things as well if you've got pictures out there and uh, you're on course today. So. Well, now we get a good looking shot of overhead here from the courtyard by Marriott Kinkamehameha Beach Hotel. Photos here, absolutely adorable. Look at that. We've got our tier swim course there, Mike, and uh, our pro men are lining up on the shores there. If you mean adorable, you mean adore. I adore it. Here we've got Tim O'Donnell on the left stretching. He's our top American from last year. Ferris Al Sultan, of course, with the beard. That's Tyler Butterfield in the red kit. These athletes are primed and ready. That's our 131. That athlete that's there uh, for us in the in the picture is our. Um, looks like that's one of our top women um, that, that had a high ranking from last year. So these women started with a number one ranking, move on down from there. Ag again, this is some great footage of what it looks like right there on the scene. Guys, this is where you walk on down. So this is how you sort of, well, we're back away, but that was how you drop down the staircase right into Kailua Bay. These athletes that you see there, there's paddle boards marking that start line. The athletes are nervously treading water. Some of them may still be getting a warm up. 11 minutes away, right, Greg? That's the tension point. Yeah, tension point for sure. They're just finishing off their warm-ups right now. And you can see the lifeguards have been very well trained by uh, Rock Fry and the crew down here. What they do is they paddle across the uh, start line, you know, that they keep moving. There's Daniela Reef from Switzerland. She's the one that we're all looking at. She's had three Ironman victories in the last three months. She's the current Ironman 70.3 champion where she won the championship five years ago in Mont Tremblant. It would be the last time on North American soil for a little bit as the uh, World Championship heads off to Zelamsee next year in Austria on August 30th. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing that wonderful race happen there. It's going to be great for the Europeans absolutely to have a chance on their soil. So here's Daniela Reif just going through those final preparations here. The Red Bull athlete from Switzerland looking very good. Looks like she's going to wear sw uh, two swim caps today, yeah, Mike, and that's going to be hot. For sure. And, you know, I think a lot of them like to do that, get, you know, cap, goggles, cap. It keeps the cap in place. It keeps the goggles in place. It does warm the head up a bit. But I think some of these athletes know that's their style, obviously the branding of our sponsor. But for me, Daniela Reef, what, what's really cool about this is she's on a nice trajectory. She's very hot right now. She's absolutely on a streak. So she also won the 5150 in Switzerland the day before her debut Ironman. How cool is that? She won two races, big ones, on the same weekend. Followed that up two weeks later by winning the European title at 70.3. So she's a European 70.3 uh, champion as well. Then, a couple weeks later, she did it again, like you said, Tromplon. It's amazing. The girl is primed and ready, and everyone's talking about her. So what's different from years past is the newcomer, Chrissy Wellington, snuck under the radar. The guy, the, you know, the girls let her go. They didn't know. They didn't know who she was. They didn't respect her. They didn't understand her. Reef, or Reef, sorry, different story. This Daniela Reef, she is on everyone's radar. She stated, I want to set the course bike record. You know, her coach has said she may well go under 444. That's the course record, Greg. That's really quick. Yeah, the course record is held by Karen Turing in um, 2011, but I, I, I think that's going to be, you know, fairly hard to get. And uh, what's with all those Swiss girls, you know? Bridget McMahon won the Olympics, and then we had Nicola Spirig from Switzerland, Natasha Bartman won six Ironmans. Karen Turing has been an incredible athlete for us. But there we look at the $20 million pier right down here in Kailua Kona. That's, uh, that's uh, very valuable real estate. That sure is. And if you just if you look at that pier and, and just shoot off to the left with your view, you see that red tier buoy. That is marking the other side of the start, the left side of the start. So that line of dots that you can see from here, that's your, that's your paddleboard line. Right behind that paddleboard line is all of your anxious 
anxious professional athletes. You'll see they'll have those guys in the water because they start in about seven and a half minutes, exactly seven and a half minutes. After that, the, there's a 10-minute gap. So we'll get a nice little, or sorry, five-minute gap. We'll get a nice warm-up for the, for the pro women. I mentioned this before. Nerves are at a peak right now. Oh, man, these guys are just all antsy. <laughs> You're positioning. They're trying to find out who they should start next to. Hey, there's Crowey. He's done well here. Look, there's Pete Jacobs. He gets out quick. So people are shuffling and ruffling. They're trying to find that spot, treading water. But really, you know, this is, I think, a peak of nerves for a lot of these athletes. Yes, yeah, so we get a good look at uh, the conditions out there on Kailua Bay, right here in the Pacific Ocean on the big island of Hawaii for the 2014 Ironman World Championship presented by GoPro. Now, yesterday and a, and a couple of days ago, we had a little bit of wind coming into the bay here, a little bit of chop on the water, uh, and the rough conditions were uh, prevailing. But yesterday, we got a report from the north shore of Oahu. They got 20-foot swells at the moment. But as we look atop Mount Hualalai, 648 is when the sun pokes its nose over the hill there, but it's not going to be until about half an hour after the start when the sun does come up. So the athletes, if they swim off to the right-hand side, if they're breathing to the right-hand side, will be hampered a little bit by the sun in their eyes. But uh, I tell you what, pretty perfect conditions as we are starting our day. That image tells me one thing as well. When you see that entire mountain, it tells me one thing, and I'll share this with you all at home because you're not here. That means it's going to be hot. When you sometimes wake up, those, that cloud is enshrouded in, or that mountain is enshrouded in clouds, you know there's going to be a little bit of respite from the heat, but right now, no such luck. This, this is a sunny, clear day. We saw stars early. We're seeing that mountain now. So, uh, obviously, we say this over and over again. It's hot in Kona. You come here to race a hot race, but how hot? Various levels of humidity, various levels of heat, various levels of wind. So to me, I'm seeing a picture of a mountain <laughs> completely visible, and that tells me, watch out, fellas. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a scorcher. You know, we may talk about the temperature, you know, getting up to 86 degrees in town, but what happens out on course, out on the lava fields, where there's absolutely no protection from the shade or anything, is that the ground heats up. It's all black lava, and it's reflective. It stays in the ground and stays down very low. So temperatures on course and out of the ground are reaching temperatures of about 100 to 120 degrees on the road surface. So, you know, just imagine, uh, you know, the heat and the humidity coming out of the ground as uh, we can hear the national anthem from the United States just uh, in the background right now. So we do know that it's getting close and uh, let's just take a brief moment uh, and pause for the national anthem of the USA. So that's the anthem. I'm not sure if you folks at home can hear it, but right now we're taking a quick pick at the start of the bike. So these guys come right out, start of the run as well, but this is Polani. So our booth is right there. You can't see us, don't need to, but right here <laughs> they've chalked the road, inspiration for their athletes. Ooh, look at that shot of the moon. But, but so Polani becomes a hot spot. It becomes a beautiful spot. Let's just tune in here for the swim start anthem. Look at the Red Bull paratroopers coming in here right now, just coming all the way down, and a death-defying jump into Kailua Bay and landing right in the water here. You can see right behind the power bar bottle. My goodness, what a great landing. Look, two of them, that's amazing. These guys are unreal, so what a fun way to introduce the race. Look at it, there it is. There's the anxious, sort of nervous energy of the pier. It's, it's an exciting energy, but look at all those bikes. you got spectators, you got volunteers. 
You've got the athletes, all of whom are standing near the water's edge or in the water. Um, we do allow, it's kind of a great thing here. You can get in as early as you want often to warm up, almost 25, 30 minutes for some of these athletes. Pretty cool. I always sort of thought athletes would appreciate that, having that extra um, chance. I mean, sometimes, again, you speak to the nerves. As soon as you slip into the water, it's a sloughing of nerves. They just slide off you, and, and you feel like, hey, all this work, all this preparation, a year for some of these people in, in thought and preparation for this race, it just sort of, it builds and slides off and you're ready as soon as you hit that salty water. Um, we mentioned it, 83 degrees. The water temperature is great. You can feel a bit chilly when you first hit it, and there's teeny tiny pockets of cold, <laughs> right, Greg, when you What's get in chilly, there? chilly, about 83 degrees, When Michael? you first get in and the <laughs> sun's not out, man, I've been cold in there before, so uh, maybe it's just... Uh, there it is. So look at that line. I mean, I'm not sure if they can hear uh, Mike Raleigh. I'm starting to hear him. That's your professional men's race right there. Look at how long it is. That's 50, what, four men. All of our guys in there lined up. We yeah. did see one bike missing from transition. Yeah, that was number 13. Start, yeah. Number 13. Yep. Um, but right here, look at that crew. These guys, man, this is the jostling. This is the shoving. Everybody wants to get going. Hopefully these men sit tight. Sometimes you're frustrated because the, the board is right in front of you. You think, I'm going to lose it all because that board's in front of me. And don't don't worry, this board uh, you know, flips uh, in line with you yeah. and you're all good to go. Yeah, so they'll, they'll get heads up from the uh, race starter that uh, the lifeguard boats will uh, come back a little bit. And if you can notice on the yellow stand-up paddleboard by Surf Tech there, you've got Rock Fry. He will be leading the race out there. He's standing about 10 yards in front of our athletes at the moment. He's got the GoPro Hero 4 strapped under the back of the boat to give us a different perspective of the race as well. In our NBC coverage coming up in November, so stay tuned for our NBC coverage. Coming up in November, you can find out more information on www.ironman.com for all of our races and all of our live texting updates today. Kevin McKinnon and his magnificent crew are going to be giving us all the information today. So we're only as good as Kevin and his crew. So we hope that everybody and all of our spotters have a fantastic day as well. So I'm inside of the last minute right now. Seconds. So any minute now. And this is great. 50 seconds going in by my watch. That's a nice solid line. You've got Mike Raleigh. This is is it right here folks this race kicks off a lot of frantic swimming because as we know the dynamic has changed we've got super swimmer Andy Potts back in the mix Marco Albert Pete Jacobs the guys that really like to take it out hot this is where it could get real for some of these pros because again Jan Fredino Yvonne Rania your fellows that came from that Bevan Dockery came from that short course background as well as a Paul Matthews who was there Richie Cunningham never gets shot out of a group so all of those guys looking to have a very strong swim start and then the rest it's like Matt said earlier in the week, this could really string out and have group, group, group instead of last year where we saw a large pack, 10 seconds welchy by my official timepiece here on, on the morning. All right, let's stand by for the start. And there you have it. And the 2014 Ironman World Championship presented by GoPro is officially underway there, Michael, as we can see that the groups are gonna start forming on the left-hand side, on the right-hand side. Give us an idea exactly how you know, the water is right now, and why would you start to the left or the right or in the middle? That's such a preference thing, but I always felt like, you know what, you start where you need to start to get the straight line, the direct line to the turn. If you're, if you're 50 meters to the right or the left, it doesn't add to your distance. It's negligible difference. So what you do is you go hard, and then once you've gotten about one, two, 300 meters in, somewhere in that two to 300 meters, you're going to realize that you have to settle in, find your pod. That's a pod right there. We've got two or three other pods. What I would predict happens is we see these two or three pods merging. So we'll see two pods form one later. They're all going to kind of tee out there as they merge. Already, though, look at this. This is incredible. So there's a group to the left splitting. You're seeing that group splitting and coming over. What an incredible image. It's it's obviously you've got this these two pods in the middle of that second pack. They're already one giant pack. It, you know, I, I like this line right here on the far right. There's a line that's right on the buoy line. They look like they have clean water. They may be going a touch slower, but, you know, they look pretty good and smooth right there to me. Yes, we've got Andy Potts off the front. He's leaving the arrowhead pointing in the right direction out to the first turnaround buoy, which is going to be located 
just over one mile into the course. So Andy Ponce leading here with Marco Albert. Pete Jacobs right in there as well, as you can see, uh, right in that group there. So the majority of the pack, you know, being sensible, starting in the middle there, we've got Terenzo Bazzoni, he's right in there as well, as you can see. Craig Alexander wearing number 11, is right up there as well. So we can see that we're off to a fantastic start this morning here at the 2014 Ironman World Championship presented by GoPro and uh, getting right in there, you can see the, the turnover there. There's strokes per minute, Mike, at around about 90. Yeah, it's quick. I mean, you know what? There's various people. Some people get in there to have a long, strong stroke, but a lot of times the open water stroke of choice is a choppy, fast turnover. You know, high elbows, choppy, choppy. You know, the tier official swim course here, these guys are tackling it hard, and it is one heck of a sight. I love the way these guys get after it. This is a long day, and nobody's holding back right now. Yes. I'd, I'd say they're all on the limit. You know, they're all on the limit. They can tolerate that, though, Greggy. Yeah, it's about the only time of the day, Mike, that they're going to be in the anaerobic zone, you know, the first four or five minutes of this Ironman until they settle into their rhythms. And you can see now that they're all coming together in the middle right there, that, that large group right in the middle section. And uh, with Andy Potts right off the front, look at his rating, absolutely beautiful. He's got those high elbows. He's landing his arms around about 75% out in front of him right now. 100% would be ridiculous because you don't want to start your catch, you know, that far out. You put your hand in at about 75, you glide out to 100% and you start the catch of the, the pull stroke there in uh, freestyle there. As you can see, Potts is doing a very good job of it right now. Now you've got two guys in the middle there are just trying to uh, accelerate away from the rest of the competition and they're doing it successfully in the early part of the swim. So coming up to about, uh, oh, say 400 yards into our swim right now, we can see that we've got two large groups, one on the far side, one in the middle, and there's no difference as the course goes when they, if they choose to, you know, swim from the left side or the right side, if you draw a straight line out of that turnaround, there's nothing much in it. Don't forget we've got Harry Wiltshire also from Great Britain, another guy who can really swim. This was kind of a domestique role for some of the ITU races. We've got, you know, David Della, who's been known to really light up these swims. There's some really good guys we mentioned Pete Jacobs. I hope I mentioned him. He's another guy that can really swim well. I'm betting, yes, you said Andy Potts. That looks it right there. He's got the tier swim skin, tier torque. He's lighting it up. Probably Marco Albert right in his feet in the red. But looking back, I'm sure Starkowitz is in here. The guy can swim with him most of the time. It really just depends if Andy Potts decides to turn on the afterburners. Last year, we really missed him in this field from a standpoint of breaking this group apart. Andy Potts can get after it. Someone can sit in his feet. A Marco Albert to Pete Jacobs. Those athletes, Bevan Doherty, we'll look at Paul Matthews again. If those guys can sit on his feet, they draw themselves away from the others. Oh, Greg, we're 30 seconds away from the women's start. We'll come back to those men, and I know Matt will be out there picking out some swim strokes and some numbers. Check, check, check. But right now, 25 seconds away from the women's start. They're going promptly at 6.30. These women have a nice head start on the, pro, on the age group men, 20 minutes to be exact, and that's really good. It keeps that race a lot cleaner, a lot fairer. Five minutes, you're asking, is that enough? Yes, we will get some pro women are. catching these slower swimming men. But for now, let's look at this start. Obviously a lot smaller number. We've got about 35 women. Uh, sorry, it's probably about 38 women. We haven't got, there it is, Greg. The cannon is off in our 2014 Ironman World Championship presented by GoPro. They're underway, these women. Look at them go. They're much tightly packed, much more tightly packed. Yeah, on the left-hand side, you would almost imagine that's going to be Dr. Amanda Stevens and also Jody Swallow. These two girls are the stars of the swim course. We've got Rachel Joyce, also a very fast swimmer. Mary Beth Ellis is going to be in there. Liz Blatchford, Caroline Stephan. These are all fantastic Daniela swimmers. Reef, Daniela Reef, all these Reef. girls. I think they're on the right. I think that's the top of your screen. It's got to be. Those gals. Co so probably at the spearhead, I'm saying it's Jody Swallow. Jody Jody Swallow probably on most days will have an advantage, a little leg up on Amanda Stevens only because of her consistency. Amanda Stevens can light anyone up, but sometimes she just falters. It's just a weird every five or six times. Incredible swimmer, Amanda Stevens. I mean, she beats the pants off a lot of the men in these swims. So Jody Swallow, I'm guessing, Reef right in there with her. Of course, Liz Blatchford. I mean, this girl, she's unbelievably uh, built for this type of thing, coming from that short course background, coming from, you know, originally representing Great Britain, now the little Aussie, definitely tucked in there. You know anything about little Aussies, my man? Yeah, a little bit about the Aussies, yeah. And the little Aussies. I might, I may be one of those. All right, so last year, our winner, uh, Frederick Van Leed, swam a 51.02. Luke McKenzie was at 51.17. And some of our girls were, you know, swimming very, very well up the front of the course as well. You know, last year, Marinda Carfrey swam a 58.50. 
and she was actually quite a ways down on the rest of the field. Uh, as a matter of fact, she was about four and a bit minutes down. Rachel Joyce swam a 54.09. So, you know, looking at those numbers, um, you know, it's only like four or so minutes for Miranda Carfrey, but this year she is going to face a very stiff amount of competition up there. The women's race has been like no other, especially for the swimmers and the bikers in this uh, competition. For sure, and you know what? I think we did not mention yet some of these front pack swimmers, obviously from the USA, Meredith Kessler also a top-notch swimmer, Leanna Cave. I mean, you can't forget this gal won the IT World Championship in 2002 in Cancun along with Yvonne Rania. But, you know, the, the, the bottom line is we have a lot of good swimmers. These women, they're going to swim by together. I'd love to know from up front how we're doing. And for one, I would like to talk to Matt Lieto, see if he's on that boat with some info. Matt, are you there? I am, Michael. Thanks so much. Yeah, it's, uh, it's stringing out here now, guys. As you saw, there were two separate groups uh, that got actually more than two, but the two main groups got together. Andy Potts was on that left group uh, with our defending champion, Frederick Van Leerd, still sitting on Andy Potts' feet. I would not have called that uh, before the race today, uh, but they merged with the group with the Jan Ferdino at the front. He got caught in the middle. Now he's moving out on the outside, trying to be aggressive. Uh, you can tell he doesn't want to sit in the group. He's going to move around and maybe take the lead if he can, but he's certainly trying to get to Andy Potts so a gap doesn't open. Uh, but right now, we really can see this group splitting. We've got Daniel Hawksworth right here, and it looks like behind him and next to him, there's some space opening up, so we might see a gap open up here pretty soon. As, as far as the main field goes, no huge splits yet, but it's really starting to splinter in the middle of this uh, pack right now. Um, I think by the time we get to the turn, we're going to see uh, a few athletes off the front of the group. But right now, mostly a main field. We've got about six or seven athletes off the back. I can see Matt Russell off the back. Actually, not as far back as I would expect. Chris McDonald, uh, the last athlete in this group right now. Uh, looks like he's not going to be much longer for this group. But um, a lot of great swimming. Guys, the conditions here, I don't know what you can tell from up there, but it is, it's pretty rough. It's swelly. Um, it's kind of dirty water right now. Um, so it's going to be a challenge once these groups split. And if you get any athletes by themselves, uh, it's going to be trouble for them. They're going to lose a lot of time to a group that it's very important is able to stay with Andy Potts right now. So this group is absolutely moving. What do you guys have up there? Oh, you're right, Matt. I mean, we talked about that. And, you know, the, the thing is, a, a particular swimming type is what does really well in these conditions. A Richie Cunningham, who, who let's be honest, he's, a, he's a kind of an ugly swimmer, but he's a great, tenacious, and hard swimmer. So he's in there. He's going to have that short, open-water, choppy stroke hang with the bunch, whereas a pool swimming type stroke, someone that's got a long and strong stroke may suffer because of that quick chop. Is that right, Greg? Yeah, that's right. And uh, Pete Jacobs will revel in these conditions as well. He's a surf swimmer from Australia before turning triathlete. He has a very, very, uh, you know, broad amount of uh, you know, knowledge about how to swim in the ocean. And uh, as Matt mentioned, it is dirty water right now. You can see that the, uh, the waves there are sort of you know, coming up and down, the swell direction is coming from the south. It's just bumpy. That's, you know, more than anything else. It's only bumpy. There's, there's no real big swell, you know, in the water at the moment. It's just up and down, and uh, these guys are doing a great job. Now, it is really going to benefit the strongest swimmers today because they're not used to going up and down. Well, the weaker swimmers aren't used to going up and down and the rise and the fall of the ocean, you know, and they're, um, you know, they're, the, the way that they enter the water, their yep. you know their stroke sure. is uh, hampered, and you know, and as I look at it right now, well, look at this. This is absolutely incredible. You can see that they're now separated by about 30 yards on this competition already. At a you know, at 10 minutes into the race, we got 30 to 40 yards of separation. God, look at that. That is amazing, and I'm sort of surprised they're all still together, but I like it. I mean, it just speaks to the caliber of these athletes. The game has been upped. Okay, the game has been upped, and. And now what I, why I say that is we used to have guys that could still contend, still qualify for Kona with an hour nine or an hour five swim split. They can't do it anymore. We've pared the field down. We've got 50 qualifiers, some autos in there, you know, automatics. And with that, the field is tighter. You just can't get in here with, a slow, with that over hour, like hour five, hour 10 swim. So right now, you can hang on. The, the proof's in the pudding. How will they do when they come around that turn? How will they do when things change up? 
once you've hit those couple K, man, it, it's something like you can fake it, you can sort of get in there, and then you have to keep that focus up. And one thing we overlook with swim training is that focus. It's just you have to always be present, looking, who's in front of me, how am I doing, ooh, there's a gap, I gotta close it. You look around, you, you see a face, you see a number, you say, why is that guy next to me? Oh no, am I in a good spot, bad spot? It's just a constant mind game, looking, assessing, planning, moving, and, and it's just, focus. You can't stop focusing until this uh, 2.4 miles is over. Yeah, you, you're exactly right there, Mike. And uh, the TS Swim course this morning, 2.4 miles or 3.9 kilometers in length today. You can see that Andy Ponce is having a good old time with it right now off the front. He's got Jan Fredino just sitting on the shoulder. Ma Marco Albert is also in there from Estonia. But this is the main pack there, as you can see. Paul Matthews sitting on the outside as well. So all the contenders so far are up in our lead group. But I tell Ooh, you look what, at that. the pace is right on right now. You can see a single line of athletes out there right at the front there. There's Rock Fry, our lead paddleboarder today on the surf tech board with the GoPro strapped right on the back. He's uh, sporting the new Hero 4 today there, Mike. <laughs> Certainly. And remember this, folks, you've got orange buoys on the way out, yellow buoys on the way back. The orange buoys indicate you're in the first half. So athletes and new folks that haven't seen the race before, new to triathlon, new to Ironman racing, might not understand how are they inside those buoys. You're allowed to nip inside a tiny bit of the course. You have to go around every turn buoy. So to, to nip inside is okay if you're positioning. And obviously, there's a lot of movement in that ocean right now. So that moves you side to side. One of the things about the Kailua Bay, they don't get a like a crash wave situation they just get that swell that up and down and it really produces a seasickness for a lot of athletes it produces a lot of salt water intake which can believe us we'll revisit that later greg you'll see these guys having trouble with the salt water intake it, it, it'll yeah. come up and rear its head late in the you know in halfway through the bike we'll say yeah exactly and let me just explain what's happening right now it's very close to the shore we're around about 50 to 75 yards off the shore so they're never in any danger of the waves breaking but what they're battling right now is backwash and where the water hits the uh, the rocks and the seawall there down in Kailua Kona it just comes back toward the uh, the waves that are incoming and what happens is when they hit each other they rise up to a distance and then they just fall back down so it's a little bit bumpy right now but once they get out past the Royal Kona Resort which is at one kilometer or halfway out onto our swim course today it will smoothen out and absolutely, and we know that there's there's just a great perspective I think Matt can give us. So Matt, tell us, check in, have you seen the women yet? Matt, are you there? Can you pick up? If hey guys, the, uh, down here, the, and uh, it is starting to break up a little bit. Uh, sorry to cut in on you guys, but right now we have Sebastian Keenly is right kind of at the tail end of this group. Um, he's, he's still attached, uh, but it is gapping around him. Uh, gapped is Ronnie. Ronnie is gapped. Marino Van Honacker, uh, one that sometimes can make this front group, he is gapped. Um, we've got some other athletes behind. Chris McDonald is off the back of this group. Justin Dare, your Ironman Boulder champion, is off the back of this group. Uh, it's one person we wouldn't expect, Luke McKenzie, is working really hard kind of at the tail end of this group. Uh, he would not like to know that right now Sebastian Keenly is on his feet. And to the right of him is James Kunima. Uh, so some athletes uh, kind of in the back we wouldn't expect, uh, but about seven or eight athletes in front of them, it looks like there is a gap. Uh, so by the turn, we might see another little drop in the group. But up front, Jan Ferdina, last I saw, was moving around Andy Potts. Uh, we had Marco Albert uh, was there. Daniel Harksworth was still kind of that glue that was holding the, gro the group together. Um, behind him was Andy Starkowitz, was starting to get gapped just a little bit. But from my viewpoint, it looks like he's pretty close to getting back on. So right now to the right of us, uh, we do see Luke McKenzie, James Kunima, and Sebastian Keenly really at the back end of this group struggling to stay on. Well, you know what's phenomenal is you mentioned Jan Ferdino, and we talk so much about Andy Potts because he's our Ironman super swimmer. But I remember when Simon Lessing showed up, and he kind of jokingly said, hey, this guy's a you know five-time IT world champ, one at the longest. And he came in here and he said, you know what, Michael, the swim was easy. He said, to the women. You know, he just was bopping around in there swimming easy. That's Jan Ferdino. He said, let's keep this pace on. Why not? You know, knowing the women, hey, the women, how, how far back were they? Five minutes. These women, that's the same scenario. We've got some girls that came from the short course, really good 
girls, they might find this pace kind of silly. And it's like, well, why are we messing around here? ITU, it is a bruiser. You're kicking elbows. You're knocking heads. Well, so why not? <laughs> you know, this is Ironman racing. Let's make it take advantage of our strengths. Get out. Get away. Let's hurt Marina Carfrey, whose swim is quite good now. It's not excellent. It's quite good. It's very good. But these girls, Greg, what do you think? Well, you know, Marinda's always going to face that four and a half to five minute deficit, uh, you know, with the strength of our women's swimmers out here today. But she showed us last year that, uh, you know, Marinda Carfrey went away and, and learned, you know, a couple of years ago her biking wasn't her strength and now it is one of her strengths. She really isn't that bad at all three. And as a matter of fact, she is the best when it comes to the run. With a 250.38, a world record here last year overall and in the run, it was just absolutely amazing. We're getting ready for our age group is here coming up in about nine minutes time these guys and girls are going to be getting their races started now age group women will be going off 10 minutes after our age group men there so it's seven o'clock this morning so 625 being our men's start 630 our women 650 our age group men and then at seven o'clock all of our age group women there and as we can see here on the tier swim course uh, all the nervous tension is coming to the fore at the moment you can just cut it with a knife down here in Kyle Kona, Mike yeah, absolutely, and that's a lot of people in the water. I mean, this swim is still, we have the th the four wave starts. You know, we split the age group men and women. It is still absolutely incredible. You know what? It is an awe-inspiring, absolutely awe-inspiring endeavor here. It, it makes people nervous just thinking about it, just looking about, looking at it. The nice thing is the swim start that does cause anxiety for so many athletes, they have resources now. We've gathered, we've gathered all those resources in one place on ironman.com forward slash swim smart go visit that site find out about what we're doing to have a better safer more comfortable environment for the swim start again it's ironman.com forward slash swim smart as we can see this here tier swim course here absolutely beautiful this morning we mentioned the 20 million dollar pier in the left hand side of the shot but here we go with our women right now we can see they're just off to a great start you know that that's jody swallow and amanda, Dr. Stevens. amanda stevens you can just see them also, Rachel Joyce, Leander Cave sitting in there, Caroline Stephan just back in the pack a little bit. But these girls are struggling. Looks like Mary Beth Ellis on the inside as well, just trying to keep in touch with our girls. So look at this. We've got, uh, looks like Jody Swallow just making a big, uh, you know, break off the front today. He's just swimming very, very hard at the moment. But uh, as our women get started, they're really having a dig. We saw that our men is, you know, sort of, uh, well, you could throw a blanket over the start of our men's race, but our women, not the case. Not so much. And that's what I sort of had a feeling was going to happen. Uh, Jody Swallow just has that extra gear. And, and again, I'd love to make sure, confirm with Matt once we get with him, that that's Jody. I, I'm surprised if it's not. So, Jody, we know Liz Blatcher. We talked about Daniela Reef. We've got Mary Beth. She's really good as well. Could be in there. Uh, Meredith Kessler. I mean, all the names that we expect to see there. I'm pretty sure that we just have that extra level when it comes to Jody Swallow. Also, a lot of bragging rights, a lot of, for her, I think, confidence. Some people have this unique thing where they gain energy by being in the front. They gain energy by being up front, not being towed around. So literally, someone like Jody, if she were next to or beside or behind someone, it could bring her down. I'm speculating, but this is obviously often the case with an athlete of these cal this caliber. She gets out there and she just gains strength. So drafting, sure, it saves you physically, but but it hurts you mentally. So I think she's up there trying to put the hurt on these girls. Say, you know what? You want to come out first with me? You're going to really have to work. And so that's what we're seeing. And they're working. Okay, they are working. Last year, Caroline Stephan, Rachel Joyce, Leander Cave, and company swam just over 54 minutes. Our leader, uh, actually our winner, was Marinda Carfrey. She swam a 58.04. And then also at 101 was uh, Yvonne Van Vlerken. So you can tell that, uh, you know, not a lot of the... The girls that come through at the end of the race are, uh, you know, our big swimmers. So we can just tell that right now that it is going to be, you know, started out by a swimmer, a very strong bike, and it finishes off with the run today. But, you know, looking at our women's competition right now, they're off to a solid start. And uh, Amanda Stevens, Jody Swallow, they were the two that were pushing it early. We can see the Rachel Joyce, Mary Beth Ellis, Liz Blatchford and company are sitting in that group as we look out toward the turnaround of our swim today, 2.4 miles. So we're almost one and a half miles, sorry, 1.2 miles into our opening discipline today here on the Tier Swim Course. And it looks like we've got Andy Potts just trying to get off the front ever so slightly, but you can still see that the, the majority of our favorites are right up there 
at the front of this race still as we hit the halfway point on the swing. For sure, for sure. And that's funny to see that guy popping off to the left over there. If that's for Dino trying to get away, make a break. One thing that happens, you know, when you get into a race, this is the only turn. There's one turn, a buoy, another turn. It's just usually courses have multiple turns or multiple laps even. This is one giant loop. So what's going to happen every time this happens? You go into a turn, the pace is hot. It's fast into the buoy, fast out of the buoy. In this case, fast into the body glove boat, fast out. So we do see that happening every race. Kona is no exception. It gets very, very tricky. The the wide, sort of the, the, the berth you have, if you will, the area that you have for a wide group of people, they have to come in together. Matt, you're on the water. You can see these guys. What have you got for us? Uh, yeah, Michael, thanks. I'm down here with the women's race, and off the front is Jody Swallow. Uh, she's got a pretty good gap, uh, but to be honest, it looks like it's coming back down a little bit. She uh, she definitely had stretched out a little bit more before uh, went out hot. Uh, going to the front to chase her down right now, we have Meredith Kessler. Uh, she's in the front of a group of six women, and in that group we have... Uh, Kessler behind her, I believe, right now is Amanda Stevens. Mary Beth Ellis is in that group. Liz Blatchford is in that group. Leanda Cave is in that group. Uh, first athlete looks to be dropped from that group is Yesterby. Uh, behind her, uh, Daniela Reef is leading a group of by my count, maybe seven women. Uh, so in that group, you know, we'll have the favorites like Rachel Joyce. Uh, we haven't had uh, the ability to get numbers on all these ladies, but right now we have a front, front group of six with Stevens, Kessler, Mary Beth Ellis, Blatchford, Leanda Cave uh, is right at the back of that group. And they have a 20 meter gap behind Jody Swallow. And it, it is getting uh, a little more rough out here the further we get out. Um, so I think we're gonna see these things uh, split up and as you see the women are on the rivet right now actually if we if we look right here it looks like we're losing feet um number 104 i believe sorry don't don't take that as fact but it looks Blackford. like uh, the athlete behind amanda stevens is uh dropping uh off the pace right now but uh we're gonna go back around see if we can get some more numbers but uh this front pack of women is is a little more strung out than we might have expect so we might not have them all kind of coming into transition together but uh we're gonna go back around and try to get some numbers for you guys awesome great that's great stuff matt and you know what 104 that's that's blatchford and right behind blatchford i can recognize that's mary beth ellis so again really impressive for jody swallow to gap out to these women they're incredible swimmers 20 seconds is a lot i mean you're looking at 25 meters that's a lap of their sorry that's a lap of the pool right there yeah exactly and also uh, meredith kessler leander cave michelle best to be just trying to hang on in there in that lead group daniela reef from Switzerland as well. So uh, I tell you what, all the girls that we were talking about earlier are not letting us down as we pan across our swim course at the moment. One minute away, one minute away from this first age group wave, which is our men here at the for the Ironman World Championship presented by GoPro. We have got a heck of a race set up for you guys. Ten minutes till seven, these guys are going off. What a great, great thing to have the men and the women separated. It really cleans up that age group women's field, absolutely. There it is. Look at it. It's still an incredibly impressive sight, even if with four waves. I love it. So look at them. They've, they've gone to other side of the tier uh, swim start buoy. They're taking up this whole berth. It is amazing. This is it. We love when this happens. 20 seconds, Greggy. It's coming. There's the cannon. Yep, less, than, less than 15 seconds away right now. So let's pause for our age group men's start here. Stay right there, guys. Stay right there on the cannon. Right there. There 2014 is. Ironman World Championship presented by GoPro Age Group Men underway with over 1600 of those guys just getting underway with their race today and look at this epic side one of the greatest opening shots of any sporting event anywhere around the world and it's a testament to the ironman corporation as we see all of these athletes getting their chance to become world champion from over 60 qualifying races around the world and here we are it all culminates into this one moment october 11 2014 and now they are officially underway with their day, Mike. I'd say they are, and that is one massive lot of arms and legs. Look at the white water. Right now, these athletes, of course the nerves are gone, but what's replaced those nerves is a lot of action. And this is, 
I mean, this is it. If you've never been in a wave start like this, it is something special. You are left, right, center of all these athletes. So every time you take a breath, there's water coming at you. Either it's water from the ocean or it's water from the guy next to you kicking, water from the guy next to you splashing. You know, this is it. This is really kind of, and again, they're inside the buoy. Don't worry about that, folks. They will all make it to the left side of that turn boat and the turn buoys. But this is it. This is why we do Ironman, I think, is just to get in there and race with one another. You're in the same course as the professional athletes. You're with people that are going to finish 17 hours. You're going to finish with people that are out there in the eight-hour category. This is it. Up, down, and around the corner, right, Craig? It's every yeah. type. It's amazing. We can see that our athletes now are just getting out onto the course. They will get over to the left-hand side of those tier swim buoys in a moment. Uh, they don't have to in the first pump, but then they will go over to that left-hand side. So we can see that uh, Jody Swallow has now been pulling away from the rest of our girls in the swim. Mary Beth Ellis is also in that group today. So she's doing a great job of hanging in there, as is New Zealand's Gina Crawford. So our girls now are, you know, stringing out in single file, no longer in a pack situation. So we know that Jody Swallow is setting a very fierce pace. Absolutely, and I like that you went back and referred to her old school there, Gina Crawford. She's now Gina Ferguson, isn't she? So that's really good stuff. Never mind the whole marriage thing. I mean, you've tried that with my wife before, calling her the old uh, maiden name. There you go. But uh, I've, I've, I've got her now. So look at, we've got, I mean, again, and she's someone we haven't even talked about, right? Gina, for, I mean, she is a multiple Ironman champion. She's got a new coach, new approach. I would expect to see her. I mean, how many times has she gone top 10? Four or five at least. This girl can always be a factor in the race. She's the one who raced, you know, toe-to-toe -to -toe with Liz Blatchford in Blatchford's debut Ironman at Cannes last year, 2013. You know, th this is a good, good girl. I'm glad you mentioned her. Um, and a mother of a two-and-a-half son, a two-and-a-half-year-old son as well. So Gina Crawford hailing from New Zealand on the South Island there. Absolutely gorgeous. And on the North Island, we have our you know, our uh, neutral grain and, and Kellogg's or whatever it is. <laughs> New Zealand Ironman Championship as well in, in March. And that is an absolutely brilliant race. Started out there and uh, up in Taupo by Jane Patterson, one of the greats, uh, race, race directors and uh, race managers out there down there in New Zealand and also the Asia Pacific Championship coming up in the end of March as well in 2015. Tier, the official swim course here for our 2.4 miles as we are just about set to get our age group women underway here. So we're about a minute and a half away from getting those guys uh, underway as well. So we've just about got uh, three quarters of our athletes on course right now. Our age group women are almost set for a start in their 2014 Ironman World Championship presented by GoPro. As we look across Kailua Bay and we can see that our athletes here, this looks like our men pros heading back toward uh, Kailua. They're on the downward leg, as we say. They're actually swimming into a little bit of a current there, Mike, because the tide will be pulling out here pretty soon. So what is it like for these guys right now to go around you know, our, our turn buoys and then be heading back? Okay, for sure. I mean, that's that's it. Like, these guys are coming back, and as you said, now if you're breathing right, you're staring at the sun. It also becomes exceedingly long. You come around that, that boat, the turn buoy, and you feel like you've been working really hard for a really long time, which, you know, by some standards you have, but you've got to round it, and you've got to come all the way back. Duh, obvious statement. But the point is, you feel like... You know, you've worked so hard. You're so, you're sort of so in this moment, in this competition. And then I think the reality hits. You shift. You get a little current pulling you back. It gets choppy. Obviously, there it is. There's a break. There's a pull apart. You see this happen now. It's not uncommon to see a contender, we'll say like a James Cunema or even a Tyler Butterfield, be there until the last kilometer and then just lose that, that, that half step. And, and when you lose that half step or that half stroke, Boom, you're gone. And then a K to go, you do it alone. Yeah, well, I'm surprised to see that, uh, you know, our lead group there isn't uh, more athletes. So the pace has been really on today with Jan Fredino, Andy Potts right up there. Pete Jacobs is in there as well. So when uh, Harry Wilch here, we know that for sure. So we know that the uh, the race up front is really, really fierce right now. But the guys like Marina Van Hoenacker and Luke McKenzie, two of the guys that I'm very surprised not seeing in that lead group. 
Yeah, and Luke, you know, it, you never know. It, it's this is another guy that he he when when he's on, he can be with anyone, but he's got enough inconsistency that he could drop off a little bit. That doesn't mean anything really on the big picture. He could certainly come in group up if he's 30 seconds i mean he can get that group especially the way this bike course opens up with a nice climb up kuakini early on so yeah. matt what have you got for us out on the water do you see anything happening later in these stages 30 minutes in for these men uh yeah i do michael thank you uh mm -hmm. we we do have jan ferdino now in the front of the race uh he's pulling away a little bit but it looks like marco albert uh, has actually covered that so i don't see andy potts or where he's gone in the group but we can be sure that um he is he's in this group but in the back of the group, we had athletes uh, Joe Gambles, Richie Cunningham. They're kind of on the tail end, but it looks comfortable. I, I feel like this group is probably uh, going to stick together for the most part, unless unless Jan really is pushing the pace up here. And and we're waiting in the back to see what's happening. And I, I do think we see Luke McKenzie off the back of this group. Um, you know, Sebastian Keenley is off this group. Uh, Marino Van Honacker is off this group, and we're, they're going to have a chase group. It actually looks like about nine or ten athletes. Uh, we're going to get the number, uh, the numbers of these athletes for you. But right now, it looks like there is going to be kind of a an old style chase group. Uh, often, when we see the group uh, break up in the years past, at least it's been ones and twos. But right now, it looks like we're going to have a group of eight to ten athletes uh, together, and then behind them, it's another group of five or six athletes. So. Uh, one person in the middle in no man's land. I'm not exactly sure who that is yet, but it, it might be Ferris. Uh, it is Ferris also, Ton actually is kind of in no man's land. That's a surprise for me, uh, but he's gonna keep pushing. Um, but we're gonna, we're gonna go back and see if we can get some numbers to, to know what this uh, group is gonna be like when we get off. But Luke McKenzie leading this group, uh, trying to uh, keep, keep the damage minimal uh, in, this, in this swim gap we have right now. All right, thank you very much there, Matt, as we're on the Tia swim course, and we can see our lead out there today is uh, growing, but the weather today has been brought to you by Foster Grant. Who's behind those Foster Grants? Okay, so we've got our women that are just turning around the uh, swim buoys at the moment on the way back in on the inward leg. As we can see, our pro men now separated our first couple of groups there. So it's interesting. We've got Pete Jacobs right up there, Freddie Van Leer, Jan Fredino. We've also got Andy Potts in there. And we can confirm that Faris al Santan is in between our groups. Now, in that second group, I would imagine that we've got Craig Alexander and, and the rest of those guys. You know, I think um, Marina Van Hoenark is going to be in there. Luke McKenzie will be in there as well. You know, and then James Kanema, who was fourth place last year, Luke McKenzie, who was second place last year, are falling off the back of those groups, as is first, third place last year, and that was Sebastian Kinley. So there's, you know, no question, we, we know what's going on there. We know that James and we know that Sebastian are the not, you know, not so great in swimming, but when they get on that bike, we know that they come to the front. And you know what? This is the crazy thing is the way this, this race with this caliber, and everybody's up their game. They figured out, you know what? I have to have all three disciplines. It's not to say that it wasn't always that way, but it's really, the proof is in the pudding. These guys came to the table with a better swim, and so what we're going to see when they hit hit this first opening stretch of cycling here on this Blue Cycles bike course, we're going to see them really put the pedal to the metal. They're going to really try and maximize. There's a flat section. There's a little hill, flat section, hill, and then a downhill followed by a giant hill. Count it, three big hills <laughs> inside the first few miles. Those three hills really allow some of the guys that were close to get together, and that's excellent. So when they do that, we see these guys really come together. Um, so I don't know. Let's just see what happens there, Greggy. Okay, Mikey, we're uh, coming up to 30 seconds away from our age group women's start and also dangerously close to when our men get out of the water. Last year we had Pete Jacobs coming in at around about 50 minutes and 56 seconds and the majority of the group right on that 51 minute mark as we're about 15 seconds away from our age group women right now. That will be our final wave of the day as we get set to see more than 2,000 athletes getting set for the 2014 Ironman World Championship championship presented by GoPro. And there we go, the final wave of the 2014 Ironman World Championship presented by GoPro on the official swim course here brought to you by TIA is underway. And Mikey, we've got over 2,000 of the fastest athletes in the world in the water and underway. And what a treat for these women to have this. I, I mean, I can't praise them enough for making these wave starts, just separating it. It really makes 
for a less frustrating and a fairer race for everyone. Everyone has their own category around them. And the women age groupers, I think for them, it's just less worry, less trouble. They can get out there and not, you know, not have a disadvantage by either being ridden over, swum over, or also getting accidentally caught up in a draft bag, or intentionally for that matter. They don't have that choice. So these women are really going to be out on their own, starting at 7. Do the math, folks. They still get 17 hours to get done by midnight. It's a good, good thing to see this happen. And a lot of pink caps in there, Greg. A lot, a lot of pink caps there, Mike. And one of my favorite things during the week was Thursday night when we actually got to go down to the uh, you know, the welcome dinner, and it was an absolutely brilliant night. We saw a, a whole bunch of our age group world champions that were returning. We also got to see one of my favorite things of the whole week. John McLean, the Ironman Hall of Famer, wheelchair athlete, got up out of his wheelchair and walked across the stage and did an interview with Mike Riley and Bob Babbitt. That blows me away. It's so cool. I saw the 60 Minutes down in Australia. And, and what an incredible story. It's almost unbelievable. It's science fiction. It's yeah, really inspirational. It really is. And then also, we've got some special interest stories today. We've got Alex Zanardi. He was a Formula, a Formula One uh, driver there. Also, still uh, racing in the Grand Prix BMW scene. You know, in uh, in Europe, but right now we'll get back to those sponsor, uh, sorry, those special interest stories. But we'll go down and talk to Matt Lieto because we are nearing the end of the swim course, Matt. Yeah, thanks so much, Greg. Uh, so right now it looks like on, on camera we've got Meredith Kessler has bridged up to Jody Swallow. Amanda Stevens is gapped off that, but only about five meters uh, behind them. We have the rest of that first group that we had uh, the first time. We had Leanda Cave was in that group. Um, it looks like we do have two athletes getting kind of split up right now. So we might have a, a separation of, you know, anywhere from 15 to 20 seconds, but I don't think it's a huge separation uh, from these seven girls now. Uh, we do have Michelle Yesterby still kind of in uh, no woman's land uh, here in between the two groups, but we still have uh, main or a chase group of it looks like eight to ten athletes together uh, with one straggler off the back and then another group of seven to eight girls another maybe 45 seconds back from that but uh, we're going to hightail it back to get the men in transition uh, but the women's race Meredith Ketchler actually now moving around Jody Swallow really exciting actually that gap to Amanda Stevens that was five meters when I started talking is now nine so uh, those girls are pushing the pace starting to come through the men's field uh, back to you guys we're going to head back to transition all right, thank you very much, Matt. So we're just about 12 minutes away from seeing our first athletes getting out of the water today. We know that that is going to be either Andy Potts or Jan Fredino, Freddie Van Leerder. They're all right up in the lead of this group. Now, last year, our fastest swimmer was an age group, and that was Rafael Gonclaus from uh, Brazil. And uh, he was in the age group race, and he came to the front and just, you know, he just swam everyone out of the water. He was faster than the pros, first age grouper across, and I know today that he's going after that record, which is 46-41, held by Lars Jorgensen way back when. 1997, uh, yeah, Not going to happen, Greg. Not going to happen. <laughs> that guy was an Olympic-level swimmer. I'm not saying that last year's guy isn't this guy. I can't even say his last name. Brilliant. Good tidbit, and thank you, ML2, for giving us those updates out on the water. You know what's phenomenal, and I just have to talk about it. We saw the footage. If Meredith Kessler is coming up and around Jody Swallow, the question just becomes, why are these girls swimming so hard? Like, why are they swimming this hard? It's important, but at one point, once you're away and you've broken and you've hurt, and hurt some other girls, is it so the so-called match burning are we doing that does that count in the swim to me it does a little bit like you only have so much to dig from so if you're going out there and hey, it could play to her favor but in the end it's a gamble we're so close we've broken up you've hurt the slower swimmers already you fast swimmers are there and and to put 20 30, 20 30 meters on these other swimmers it's going to come right together you just don't clip your helmet quick enough and they're right on you so be careful i love her gumption i love her style meredith kessler one heck of a champion that i would never second guess but let's just see what happens later yeah my general philosophy in an ironman is that uh you know we have uh, a level race you know strategy where you'd want to try and keep a, a level you know attitude and a level pace going on all day you've only got x amount of surges in you you know you, you, you're ramping up the rivet you're getting up into that anaerobic threshold how many times in the day can you do that and i think that you know that effort a little bit early you know in the race like that it may hurt her but uh, she's up into the lead of the race and i tell you what when meredith races from the front she races at her best so that's probably where she feels comfortable and now she's right up the front there you're, you're right i mean i sort of contradicted myself earlier because i do know that these athletes feel 
feel a, a pull forward when they're leading. They feel great in front. So various athletes gain energy, gain steam, gain strength by being out in front of the field. And I think Meredith is certainly one of those. She's a race from the front. Jody Swallow, those two girls, they love to go from the front. They get an extra little oomph. So that's probably it. You're totally right. And of course they can tolerate it. I just wonder, you know what, in the end, if you're sitting on Jody Swallow, sit on Jolie Swallow. She's great. You guys are doing it. But again, maybe she paid the piper a little bit and she slipped off and was uh, just the pace was maybe slipping. So that's perhaps why Meredith came through. But it's really, really neat to see these women. Um, they're, they're, they're chasing a record, too. I don't see them getting close to, to Jody Jackson's uh, record from 1999. Another top-level swimmer out of Stanford that set that course record. Another age grouper. What was she, Greggy? 49, 48? No, we'll try and see if we can find that page. But it's quite good, is uh, for sure. We saw it. Uh, yeah, exactly. 48, 43, Jody Jackson out of the USA, Stanford swimmer. And then Lars Jorgensen. He came from Tennessee, competed in the Olympics. It wasn't like this guy was just some slouch of a triathlete like uh you know like anyone so looking at what what was i thinking earlier i was thinking greg welch tell me what it feels <laughs> like because you're a guy that came from this background you know you had a very elite swim bike and run you really did and you know you won this race with a very balanced attack talk to us about how important it is to balance out and know that there's you know b excuse me bike run coming next uh, I definitely had my best races when I was balanced. Um, you know, uh, in 94 when I won, uh, first non-US you know, US athlete to ever win the race, I felt very proud about that, but I had the most balanced race ever. I just swam a very strong, you know, I just swam around about 50 minutes and 22 seconds. I did a 440 on the bike in a very windy day. And, uh, you know, at one stage on the race day, you know, Dave Scott looked across at me and he goes, Greg, no surges right now, you know, and I'm like, okay, is he trying to intimidate me or is he trying to help me? And, uh, you know, there was a preem at 85 miles where Jürgen Zach went up the road and got that and he saw me trying to go for it as well. He goes, Greg, don't do it. You know, go for the 20 grand, not the 1500. And I li listened to him and it paid off and I had a very good run that day. I think it was a 248 or something like that, but it was just an even keel type of day. And I think that that's the way that the athletes should approach this today. So today, if you want to tweet out a little tweet to us or hang with us on social media, there we go. I'm at Ironman Live, Greg, Matt Lieto at Matt Lieto and at Michael Lavar. If you want to tweet us a question or two, go ahead and do so. We'll try and answer that. We'll try and put it up on the screen as well today. But also on social media, join us at Iron Man Try on Twitter. Iron Man forward, sorry, forward slash Iron Man Try for Facebook. And the same for Instagram as well and Pinterest. So get on there and uh, shoot us some of your pictures if you're out here in Kona today. We want to see what you've got for us as well. Well, I saw Emma Fredino before, Jan Fredino's <laughs> wife, just hanging around uh, trying to get some information, and she looks very excited about what's going on out there, and she should be. Jan Fredino, the 2008 Olympic champion, has come into this race as one of the favourites. As you can say that, can you say that? Yes, we can. I mean, he's an Olympic champion. He knows exactly what to do in these races, and today he's starting as one of my favourites. However... Having not raced here, I don't have any res you know, reservations or anything. I know that the guy's great, he's in great shape, and I think today he's going to go out there and show the other guys just exactly what he can do. Well, absolutely. I mean, we'd, we'd be silly to not think he's capable of it. I think looking to last year's debut for him at 70.3 World Championships in Las Vegas, he tackled a very uh, aggressive pace at the outside of that run. We were sitting there watching him live. He ran that thing like he was only going for 5K. And I think, unfortunately, that's all he did on the day. Sorry, Perdino fans. I'm a big fan. I love to see this go down. But if that kind of attitude isn't suppressed, if that kind of um, confidence and aggression isn't suppressed and managed, it could be a short, short day uh, here for him but I think the guy he's a, he's he's one in a long line of really good Germans one at the top I mean winning a gold medal Olympics does not come as a gift it does not come easy so the guy's done his homework the guy's thought it through I'm sure he has a nutrition plan I'm sure he's got a pacing plan if he adheres to it modifies where needed and executes the guy's going to be on podium I believe I have him in second or third I think second we have got such a large group up there in the front of our men's race today. It is going to be electric in about five minutes' time when they make their way out of the water here in Kailua Bay and make the transition over to the bike ride. They will be going up, exiting the tier swim course, running through the showers. 
And then entering our Blue Bicycles bike course today, 112 miles, and that's what awaits the competition, the $20 million pier here in Kailua Kona. And all the bikes are revving up, the chokes on. We're about to put the <laughs> throttle <laughs> and the pedal to the metal out there. But let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen, we've got 53 pro men that are just about to exit the water, followed by 36 professional women. There are 621 women in the race today, and overall we have 1,566 men, like I said before, qualifying from over 60 to 90 races around the whole globe as we get set to get our first athletes out of the water today. So Jan Fredino leading our men's race, followed by Marco Albert of Estonia. And now Meredith Kessler has pushed ahead of Jody Swallow. Wow, good for her. And you know what? Take the bull by the horns. That's what these athletes do. And, and I like it. You know, there's also an incredible boost, an incredible boost that comes from, for an athlete when leading a race. So first place, there's just an external boost. It comes from the energy the crowd loves, number one. And so no matter how many seconds, minutes, or hours you spend leading an event, you're going to gain an advantage. It's like taking an extra power gel, an extra goo. It's really good stuff. So get up there, do your thing, lead the race when you can, for as long as you can, just what Meredith Kessler is doing. Um, the cool thing here for you at home, you're gonna, let's paint the picture. You don't see this as we do, but we're gonna do our best to bring you the pictures either on camera or, or, or by our voices here. I, I can tell you, you leave transition and you've got a lot of these athletes, of course, shoes on pedals, they've got to get in quick. As they do this, they're going to come right up the hill. They've got a steep little pitch before they hang a hard left. It's lined with spectators four or five deep all the way up this little section of Polani. So they do this. They're frantically trying to get their shoes on. A couple years ago, we saw Chris McCormack, a world champion two times over at this distance, bump into another athlete, nearly knock him down. So you have to be really, really careful. Frantic, but patient. Frantic, but cautious. Right, Greg? Exactly. Jan Fredino leads the course right now, and I bet you he's looking forward to a fresh water shower as he makes <laughs> his way out of the water this morning. We can see you there, the tier swim course. This is what the athletes are anticipating. Now, when they get out of the water, though, they don't have much time to hang around because, you know, races are generally not won and lost in transition, but you can certainly take the time down by being very efficient in there as well. So the showers are ready, the bikes are ready, and now we are less than three minutes away from seeing our athletes. You can see there, Mike, they're gonna draw that tangent right here. They're gonna go right to the left side of our pier there at the moment. So the tier swim course is drawing to a close for our swim leaders out on course at the moment. Jan Fredino, the 2008 Olympic champion, is followed by Marco Albert from Estonia. Right in the lead there is also Andy Potts. He's led this race before. He knows exactly what to do. Pete Jacobs, the 2012 champion, is also in there. What's going on now, Michael? Is Are they well, accelerating? Are they kicking the legs more? Are they saving energy? Are they thinking about the bike ride? What's going through their mind? You know, a little bit of everything for a different athlete. So some of these guys are popping up saying, I get a bonus from a sponsor. I'll pop out first, get some extra cash on board. Some are kicking their legs because they have to activate, flex the feet, dorsiflex the feet, get the calf a little bit engaged because the calves are pointed, toes are out. What happens? You stand up, oops, a cramp. So we don't dorsiflex during the swim. As soon as you do that, you could run into trouble. Some do that, some settle in, some are thinking through a routine in their mind. Helmet, glasses, go. They got a little mantra. Some are thinking, you know, out of sight, out of mind. And, you know, one of the things that, that I think is very relevant to discuss with a speedy or slow transition is you could really lose contact and you could really get away. Obviously, there's a large pack. We're not going to see that right now. But some people frantically push the pace through T1 just so they can, you know, men just cra crack someone, get away, or gain that edge from being free and clear. Right now, these two guys at the front, guess what that means? I want to be first out of the water in Kona. Right there, those two guys, it's not, there's no holding back. There's no kick in the feet. There's no preparation. Those two guys are saying, <laughs> I led, I led, I want this. It's, it's, a, it's right here, there's two freaking rams battering each other, <laughs> smashing the horns. This is it. It's like, no, I want to be first. I'm sorry, I'm Andy Potts. No, 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 but I'm the Olympic champ. This is a battle royale right here, Greg. Yeah, Fredino on the right-hand side, Andy Potts, Michael Albert, Pete Jacobs, they're right up at the lead right now, getting very excited to get out of the water and go through the showers, have a little bit of a fresh water shower off there before they hit the bikes today. So 
I tell you what, with Jan Fredino, you know, he had leg cramps and all sorts of things in the Ironman European Championship this year. He had three flat tyres and he still managed to run a 243. So we know exactly what talent he has. So here we go. The Tia swim course is just about to end here. The 3.8 kilometres, 2.4 miles coming to an end as we got 50 minutes oh, on the I clock already gone through. And here we go. So Matt Lieto is standing by and ready to see some of the action down there. So Matt, what do you got for us, buddy? Yeah, thanks so much, Greg. Yeah, so they're coming around the corner here. I'm obviously right at the swim finish. Uh, we're going to start yelling out names when we see them. I've got 2010 Ironman UK champion Fraser Cartmill here. So if you hear another person yelling out names, uh, that's him. But uh, so right now we've got the leaders coming up the stairs in about five seconds. So right now, if you look behind us to the right, you're going to see the athletes run through these showers. It's going to be super frantic. They're going to be yelling their number, trying to get their transition back, and then running all the way around transition. So back to the left, we have our swim tier finish with Andy Potts gets to it first. Jan Ferdino right behind. They've got a little bit of a gap. Number 17, and then we've got Marco Albert, defending champion Frederick Van Leer, Tim O'Donnell, Daniel Hawksworth, Pete Jacobs. Paul Matthews in this group, a small gap. And we've got 43, number 43, Andy Starkowitz. Ben Hoffman has made this group. Tim Van Berkel has made this group. Uh, looks like Terenzo Pizzoni is in this group. Uh, Tim Reed, uh, someone who doesn't always make the, the first group is there. Is there anybody else I missed here, Fraser? 43 was no, Nils from I think that's it. Right now, Richie Cunningham coming through. Uh, you know, this is the Terrell end where if you're in this area, you're going to be working very, very hard to try to catch this front group. Uh, it's possible right now. Right now, we've got Craig Alexander, absolute legend in the sport. Uh, he's right kind of in that no man's land. Uh, number seven, I believe that's Yvonne Rania uh, coming through. So they've got a few athletes to work together. Joe Gambles. Uh, right behind Craig Alexander, Yvonne Rania, uh, those guys are going to be uh, motoring. But that's a strong, strong group. Those four athletes will hopefully or should be able to grab uh, that front group. Right behind me as well just went Paul Ambrose. So right now it's scattered. These athletes that have, it doesn't seem that important. Hey, I've lost 30 seconds. I've lost 45 seconds. But they are going to be going super, super hard to try to catch that group because that group is going to have Jan Ferdino. You're going to have Andrew Starkowitz, who's going to try to lay down the fastest bike split of all time. Uh, so these guys are going to be going super fast. So, yeah, right now Andy Potts motors through transition, still first onto the bike, Jan Ferdino in second. I'll tell you what, guys, we, you know, we've been talking whether or not we thought Andy Potts is going to be aggressive. He looked super aggressive running through transition. He wants a gap. He's got Jan Ferdino with him. He wants a gap on the rest of these athletes. Going through fast, we got Pete Jacobs getting on the bike. Uh, Tim O'Donnell is getting on the bike there. Number 43, uh, Bevan Doherty, an athlete I missed earlier, uh, he's there as well. Ben Hoffman, a great swim for him. Marco Albert right there. Frederick Van Leerd, Paul Matthews. Uh, we got some other athletes. Uh, it looks like uh, Andreas Raylert has made this front group as well. Um, there we go, Terenzo Bazzoni, uh, Richie Cunningham, and I think this is the, the trail end of that front group. Uh, Craig Alexander has motored through transition. He has now almost made connection to the tail end of this front group, but that front group is going to be spread over 45 seconds or a minute, uh, so there's going to be a lot of gaps open that they're going to have to get across. Yvonne Rania, pre-race favorite. Uh, Paul Ambrose coming through right now. Uh, Joe Gambles in a good spot, looks super comfortable. Joe Gambles looks really comfortable. So right now we've got a little bit of a gap. I'm going to go see if we've got any more information on kind of the trailers, but back to you guys in the studio. Good uh, stuff, Matt. That is excellent. Here we have close-ups of Jan Ferdino on the bike already. Andy Potts, what a battle. Just who wants to get out of T1 first? Well, they're going up <laughs> outside of the old industrial area right now. On Kuakini, they're going to make a ride on the Makala Road before they hit the Queen K. After the Queen K, they're going to hit the screaming downhill speeds on Polani Road before they make the left-hand turn on Kuakini Highway. After the Kuakini Highway, they make a U-turn and come back into town. But here goes Jan Fredino, wasting no time in getting up to Andy Potts. And by the look of it, overtaking and getting into the lead again. 
So as Jan Fredino makes his way into the lead, the rest of the guys are going to have to make up a little bit of time. Now, the two surprise omissions, Marino Van Hohenacker and Luke McKenzie. Ray Lert made it, Nils Promhold made it, Craig Alexander right on the back of it. And look at that, Fredino, after almost falling off his bike, when he exited transition, Mike. He jumped on quick on that Specialized bike. By the way, Specialized, thanks for bringing us this live coverage of the bike today. This is amazing, and, and he looks good. He looks aggressive. He looks like, hey, you know what? I'm not afraid. I'm going to try and get away. Let's keep the pressure on. Potts, thanks for the company. Please come with. But if you don't, I don't care. Here we've got Pete Jacobs. Pete Jacobs said, you know what? I know how to win this race, and let's get away. I love it. We talked about it. Could Andy Potts change his tactics and make a difference come Top American? I think he needs to keep the gas pedal on, try something new, trust the training, trust the run. This is it right here, 2012 Whoa. world champ Pete Jacobs. He's chasing down for Dino. He says, you and I, we can do something together. You know, I've got the experience and you've got the guns. Let's go. My goodness, look at Pete Jacobs go. He is really having a dig right now at the front of this race, just trying to keep in contact with Jan Fredino. Look at this, Jan Fredino, the iron rookie, right at the lead of this race. He knows how to race this. He's done it before in the European Ironman Championship, but here, never under the conditions of a world championship with all the pressure that goes with it. Pete Jacob takes a sneaky look over the uh, shoulder there. So let's just go through our swim times at the moment. Andy Potts was first there. He was at 50 56, right with Jan Fredino, equal time. Igor Amarelli from Brazil was in third. Fourth was Marco Albert. Frederick Van Leer was fifth. Tim O'Donnell Hawksworth was right up there as well. Jacobs, Osplay, Guillaume and also Paul Matthews from Australia. Starkowitz was right in there, 22 seconds down. How long do you think it's before we see him at the front? We'll see some. We'll see him at the front soon. Here's Luke McKenzie, last year's second place finisher, a little bit off the back for him. Not loving to see that, but this guy, he's a fighter through and through. I don't expect to see him this far back for long. Back to what we saw earlier, we saw Pete Jacobs closing up to Jan Fredino. That section right here where we are again, this is cresting a hill. Don't be deceived. That's not flat ground, folks. This is a hill. You're climbing up. This is latter stages of the marathon, mile 24 of that marathon. It's Mark and Dave Hill. It's Mark and Dave Hill, Hill 25 years ago. These guys crested it. Right there, I see a speedo. No, I don't, but I <laughs> thought I did. Right you here, got vision there, Mark. I, I get excited. So what we're seeing here, though, is a climb. This is a climb up. It is hard on the legs. It is hard on the heart rate. Everyone knows this. If you don't, I'll tell you now, the highest your heart rate's going to be all day long in an Ironman is right now. Transition one, of course, these first couple miles of the bike ride. And so as we talk about, here's the women. They're coming in. Let's just switch gears and come and check these women out. They are 52 minutes into their swim. And there's three of them side by side. Lieto, lead it through. We got to hear who's coming out of the water first today. Yeah, thank, thanks so much, Michael. Yeah, we're waiting for the, the lead women to come around. I, it looks like I saw them uh, from my vantage point, uh, you know, just a, a few meters to go in, in their swim. Uh, some of the last men coming through, yeah, Justin Dare just moved through. Uh, Luke McKenzie looked a little bit hazard, haggard going through transition, uh, but he had his game face on. But right now we're waiting. Looks right. like we've got the lead women uh, coming through here. Just one moment. Hold on, guys, sorry. Oh. Looks, like, looks like we've got about another 100 meters. We got a little ahead of ourselves there, but that's good. We um, got three. It does look like we have three women together uh, pushing the pace. I know you guys knew that already. Uh, I'm seeing it here for the first time, but they're side by side. You know, it, 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 I, not everybody knows how the professional triathlon works as far as how to make money, but bonuses are very important. Uh, getting out of the water first at uh, the World Championships in Hawaii, that's a big bonus. So that's why you saw those two front men running very quick out of out of the water. That's why you've got three women there you go, swimming there you go. side by side. Yes, there's absolutely bragging rights. There's possibility of records at stake. Uh, you want to win, if you win this race, winning it wire to wire is important. But uh, if there's a bundle of cash waiting at the swim finish and you've got two women swimming with you, you're going to want to swim as fast as you possibly can. So right now, these three women charging it last 10 meters of the swim side by side woman with that inside line is the one that's going to get it here we go running up the steps looks like it's amanda stevens uh coming through first great line uh we got jody swallow second meredith kessler third 
Great work by Meredith Kessler to bring that gap back. She's the reason why there's three girls and not just one in Jody Swallow. But Amanda Stevens takes a great inside line to get that fastest swim split of the day. And now we've got the chase group. It looks like we've got three athletes. Uh, this athlete, uh, Mary Beth Ellis, uh, dolphin diving into the finish. Uh, we have Liz Blashford right behind her and uh, athlete number 108 coming through as well. So that's Gina Crawford, I believe. So we have five athletes through and it is a, a substantial gap. I wanna say we've got 50 meters, 40 meters uh, to a group of four athletes. Although it seems like we've got at least two men in this group. So two women, we had a, a group of six to start. That group has splintered and now we've got two women coming through, sorry, one woman coming through, uh, the trailer man, uh, we see Matt Russell coming through, but we're gonna have another lady come through and then we're gonna get uh, to transition uh, and back to you guys to see what's going on through the end of transition here. But let's see who this last lady of this front group is. And it's our past champion, Leanda Cave, getting getting her feet under her. Sometimes you can get some trouble going up these stairs, but Leanda's got it, she's focused. She's gonna go hit the showers and she swims past Chris McDonald, Matt Russell, and uh, Mickey Weiss are the uh, male athletes that she just passed. So those guys are actually a good group of cyclists together on the men's side. But more importantly, Leanda Cave within uh, shooting distance uh, to get that front group. She's going to want to ride hard in the beginning of this bike ride to get up there. But Thanks. back to you guys and see what you see through transition and getting on the bike. Thanks, Matt. We've got uh, Amanda Stevens right there, number one, grabbed her bike. She's heading out. Jody Swall is right behind her. And Meredith Kessler not yet to her bike. But these two women, Amanda Stevens hitting the road first. Just, he's, he's about to exit under that bike out arch right behind her again um, uh, Jody Swallow what a great duo these two train together in Boulder Colorado Siri Lindley they know each other they know each other's strengths good for Amanda Stevens to, for bringing that gap right on back here we have Meredith Kessler our U.S. Great Hope as well as Meredith Kessler another American wow what an incredible show for these women and there's uh, Liz Blatchford last year's third place finisher this is it right here this is the quintessential lead group so these five women they will pack together. I'd be super surprised if they don't. These five women are incredible. Look at this. Now I'm looking for the three top bikers in the field. Daniela Reef, also Gina. Leander Cave, and the other bike rider today is going to be Caroline Steffen. So our big three is going to be right there. Gina Crawford from New Zealand just going through right now, taking her time. She is a mother, of course, got a two-and-a-half-year-old son now. So... Uh, Good on Gina, she's just getting out onto the bike ride. As we can see on our picture in picture right now, we can see on the right side there, looks like Starkowitz is out there now. So Andy Starkowitz got the long time trial, uh, you know, sort of format on, you know, his, his uniform, he's got the sleeves this year and he's uh, taking it very seriously. Wants to get up to their 418 bike record. Had a question from the viewers about that. There's Leanna Cave in your upper picture. She is our 2012 winner here, putting on her helmet, not going the full arrow. A lot of these women, a lot of these athletes just going with that non-traditional kind of becoming the new arrow helmet. It's the new old. I mean, we used to see that back in the day, but it's good stuff. Obviously, higher tech, much higher tech. She looks good. The question was, as we see Amanda Stevens leading this race, our upper picture, Starkowitz talking to the camera uh, in the lower picture. The question was about those sleeves, Greg. We didn't see this two years ago. Uh, they, they came into favor last year. How do you swim with that in a non-wetsuit swim? You have to pull it on and transition. The question from the viewer, the answer is they actually have to do it pull off the swim skin, pull on this top as you transition because you cannot have anything beyond the shoulders in the swim illegal to do that in the swim. Well, it doesn't matter to Starkey, mate. He's already hit the lead. He's already overtaken Jan Fredino and now as he heads out toward the uh, turnaround point. Footage of Rachel Kini. Joyce. I got to cut you off. There she is. This is one of our contenders. Last year's second place. Really got to mention she looks good. Quite close in there. That's Michelle Vesterby right behind her. Another great swimmer. Look into some of our men on the other side of the coin there. Uh, still coming in. They started five minutes ahead. So they lost five minutes to the women. That's not a huge deal, um, although they need to turn the burners on for the bike. Rachel Joyce, okay, she's in the hunt. She's right where she needs to be. Her cycling ability is unbelievable. I'm talking she's one of the best right now as far as those wheels go. So look to see her come on through right there. Who have we got there? That's Bree Wee. She's a local. Oh, man, she's been away from this race for about five years. Everyone loves to see Bree. Hometown hero, Bree Wee, Ironman Canada champ this year. All right, last year's swim times for our women was at just a touch over 54 minutes or 54.07 it was, but today 54.25 was Amanda Stevens out first. Jody Swallow, Meredith Kessler in third, Mary Beth Ellison, Liz Blatchford, all separated by only 
35 seconds. So it was a great swim by all of our girls. Now, where is Marinda Carfrey? Where's Caroline Stephan? Where's Daniela Reef? We'll have to wait and see. But Jan Fredino here, we can see on the right-hand side, who just went through the shot there in the red jersey. He is now in second place and looking very good, very solid. There is Pete Jacobs as well from Australia. So now that we got most of our favourites out on the men's course, we can concentrate a little bit about, you know, on the left side of the screen there, our women now heading out. Jody Swallow is a very strong swimmer, very strong biker. She was also an Ironman 70.3 world champion. And as we can see that the girls today are putting the pedal to the middle very early in this bike race. As they do. I mean, you've got this nice bit of climbing at the beginning. So this is no slouch of a beginning to the course. You have to get out there. And again, thanks to Specialized for bringing us this bike coverage all day long today. A lot of Specialized athletes on course, including who we just saw, Jan Fredino. Right now, looking again at Jody Swallow. This girl, she is not afraid to get after it and get away early. Right now, she's taking that right turn that was a steep little stinger she just came over that hill turn right onto the queen k she's climbing 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 i mentioned this earlier very high heart rates right now a lot of athletes i see gearing down hitting a bigger she's not doing this but you hit a bigger gear here slow the cadence way down and it helps you drop the heart rate if you keep this high cadence she's probably running about 84 right now if i if i counted correctly now 84 that, that's a high cadence it keeps the heart rate rolling Fortunately, at the top of that hill, they turn right, go down Polani. Heart rate can drop right on down. Um, so this is good stuff. Here again, Starkowitz, this guy is motoring away. He does not think forward much of this bike ride. He is thinking right now, right here, right now, right here. Let's get this bike ride going. Let's rock and roll. Um, so good stuff. Again, we are fortunate enough to have with us um, or brought to us this coverage by Specialized. And that's really good stuff because these guys have resources all across the board to specialize athletes, specialized bikes. Again, bringing us this coverage. Good stuff. Yeah, good stuff right now. And uh, we can see that Starkey is uh, not going to hang around. Uh, last year, he did hang around for a little bit. Luke McKenzie was right up there with him. Sebastian Kinley as well. But I don't think that's going to happen today because Marina Van Hoenacke and Luke McKenzie a little bit further back than what we had expected uh, today. So unfortunately, we're not going to be seeing those guys until a little bit later on. And Starkey did notice, well, I did hear from Starkey during the week, he is getting after Norman Studler's 418 bike record. And today, this coverage has been brought to you by Specialized. And right now, he is the 2014 Ironman 70.3 world champion he's joining us in the studio in a, a couple of moments uh, so javier gomez from spain he's also a four-time itu world champion the next terror world champion there's not much he hasn't done we're wiring him up right now but jan fredino also a specialized athlete here on the blue bicycles bike course is looking very good he's got his helmet tucked in nicely everything's looking good he's very very concentrated right now very nice cadence uh, jan fredino also, Pete Jacobs is right up in the mix as well. Looks like it's stringing out just a little bit. It's a little bit of a deceptive angle on this right now, but the guys are just heading back into town. Any moment, they're gonna make that right-hand turn on Polani and head up the hill there. So joining us uh, in just a few moments, Javier Gomez. So the girls now, Jody Swallow is just going down Polani Drive. Yeah, this is good stuff. And again, Frodo, he, he's in there. He's tucked in. He's one of the athletes that chose to wear the sleeves. You know, it's an aero top. So it's more aerodynamic. That answers question number one. The other thing is it keeps the sun off your shoulders. So one of the things that happens, the bike doesn't feel that hot out there. You get out there, take note, newcomers. The sun doesn't feel that hot on the bike, but what it does, or, or sorry, the temperature, but that sun bakes down on you. And a lot of these, uh, these athletes are kind of wise to cover those shoulders with the uh, sleeves. You know, to me, fabric means it's hotter, but they're saying it's good, good technology that keeps you cooler. So the thinking is, it's a little arrow, it keeps the sun off your shoulders. You know, it looks sharp. So that's Frodo, our Olympic champ from 2008. Man, this is, he looks good on the bike he now. He does, it's gonna be a pass right here. We're gonna see Jody going on the other side. So uh, we're, gonna, uh, we're gonna go down to uh, Matt Lieto as well uh, when uh, we get Javier in here. So we're gonna have a four-way conversation coming up. But this is the pass right here. Jody Swallow on the left-hand side of the course. Jan Fredino on the right-hand side as our leaders pass each other out on the Kuwakini Highway. At this time, we're going to uh, bring into the studio Mr. Javier Gomez. Javier, how are you doing, mate? Good. Great to be here. All right, so Javier Gomez joining us right now. He's a 2012 Olympic silver medalist in London. He's also an ex-Terra world champion. 
just recently become the four-time ITU World Cup champion as well. So uh, I tell you what, he's been on a tear. He's been uh, racking up those frequent fly miles as well, haven't you, Javier? You've had a very busy season. Yeah, it was a very busy season, but very successful. It was a great year, probably the best in my sports career. And uh, now enjoying a great race, enjoying holidays here in Kona and trying to learn something for the future. For the future, uh, 2016 is on your present radar with Rio 2016 Olympic Games with the triathlon and yeah. then maybe in the Ironman in 2017. Yeah, definitely. Uh, my main goal right now is going to be the Rio Olympics, but uh, I'm really attracted by long distance. I've been racing uh, ITU short distance for many years, so obviously I would love to be able to race here and try to race well. So that's why I came already three years ago. I'm here again, just try to to learn from this Ireland, from the race and uh, you know, ride on the course and, and get familiar with the environment. Oh, I think that's good. I mean, you've shown obviously that you have the ability to jump in as sort of a newcomer and win the race. You did that and, and folks were kind of doubting you. Uh, a lot of us had you pick though. Talk to us about that, being a newcomer. Is it weird for you? Yeah, it, it's weird and the 70.3, I really had fun that race, but I think um, for us, training for ITU, training for a short distance, you know, we can manage a, a four hours race or a three hours 45 race, like the 70.3, but I think high Ironman is a whole different thing. You know, all the nutrition, the drinking is so important, and especially in such a race like this one, it's so hot and humid. Harvey, you raced in Stockholm, then you went over to uh, Edmonton, you raced in Edmonton, then you went over to Mont Tremblant up in uh, Canada, then you went to Beijing, then you went back to Spain. Yeah. You've been all over the place. He's you stalking must, you. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I'm trying to say is that uh, the guy that you're looking on screen right now, Javier Gomez, uh, to me is the most talented guy that's ever stepped foot uh, on the uh, triathlon circuit. And he's a, he's a very talented athlete, but um, you've raced a lot, mate. You raced six times in seven weeks. Yeah, the last uh, part, the last leg of the year was really, really crazy. Um, but I was really fit and my main goals were like the grand final in Edmonton and then the next race, Montremblant. But as I was fit, I had to do a couple of more, three races more, not so important. And uh, yeah, it went really well. Okay, well, so uh, sorry, Matt, uh, Mike, uh, Matt Lieto is uh, hanging around as well. So he wants to comment on the race and also probably ask you a few questions too. Are you there, Matt? Yeah, I am, Greg. Thanks so much. Just as you guys were talking, uh, a chase group of women come through transition. Uh, we had Lindsay Corbin, Beth Shute, uh, Kareen Abraham, and uh, two other athletes I didn't quite get numbers on uh, as they went through, but uh, Sophie Goose was another one of those athletes. They had a pretty big gap uh, coming into transition behind the previous group that had uh, Heather Wirtel, Marinda Carfrey, uh, in there, those athletes were, uh, you know, running through obviously the, on, on a mission, but happy to be around the group they were around. They definitely, you could see them look around and notice. One important uh, male who came out actually behind those women uh, was Victor Del Corral. He was a pre race favorite for a lot. He's a guy who can run low 240. He out at Florida earlier this year, followed it up, or last year, followed it up with. Uh, Arizona win at I believe 802 two weeks later uh, but he is way of uh, the position to be able to win or even top 10 in this race. Interesting. I mean we know this guy can really run as many of the Spaniards can they come with that incredible pedigree Llanos, Del Corral, we've got uh, Rania who I, I mean obviously we're sitting with um, this guy right here Javier Gomez it's amazing to me so I, I just because we have you as a resource here Javier, I'd like to just ask you, like your twist on the race, your perspective, I mean, first time viewing it in person, but how do you think the newcomers, um, Fredino, uh, are going to do? And then what about Rania? Has he got yeah. it in him? Yeah, that's going to be interesting to watch. Obviously, Jan, I think he's really strong. He's a great athlete, and he was really strong at the Ironman 70.3, but probably he doesn't have experience yet in this race, and um, we'll see how it goes. And about the Spaniards, they are all really fit. They were a bit far behind out of the water. I was surprised because Rania was, was like one minute back and Victor didn't have a good swim, but it is a very long day and I think they are fit and, and they are good in, uh, in, in this kind of weather conditions. They are good in the heat. So I hope they, they will have a good race. And so who do you see out of that top 10 out of the water? Who, who jumps out at you right away? Just the top 10 out of the water. Yeah, well, definitely we spec all expected Andy leading the, the swim. Jan is a great swimmer. And I was surprised with Pete Jacobs. He had a very, very good swim. I think he was uh, yeah, second or third out of T, uh, sure. T1. 
So, uh, yeah, there's going to be a pack all together just at the beginning, and I guess when things get harder, they'll, they'll split out. Also, uh, another guy that you've raced against a lot, uh, Philip Osplay, back in your oh, early yeah. days. Uh, he was up there. He's 37 years of age right now. Yvonne Rana just, uh, by the way, was 46 seconds down on that lead group yeah. getting out of the swim there today. Hub and here's here. our women, Welchie. I mean, this is it right here. This is Mary Beth Ellis. This is a gal that won eight Ironmans, came into Kona, got fifth. Uh, her first time, not so good last year, DNF with the broken collarbone um, too close to the start time. But Mary Beth Ellis, this girl, a little bit under the radar because of last year's DNF. She hasn't really excelled this year, but this gal, tough as nails. Again, prior to Kona, she hadn't lost an Ironman. Sounds a lot like Chrissy Wellington. American Mary Beth Ellis really just came from a top level marathoning background to triathlon. We know she has it in her. Question becomes, does she have sort of the patience to come in there, I think, and race from the front and still trust her run. Yeah, and also uh, Igor Amarelli from Brazil uh, on screen at the moment. So the Brazilians having a good old time with it. At the early stages of the bike ride now, we are heading out on the Queen K Highway out toward the airport and to the Natural Energy Lab where the athletes will be running down in around about five and a half hours from now. So we can see that Igor Amarelli from Brazil is out there having a pretty solid bike ride right yeah, now. Yeah, good for him. I mean, this guy's a champ. You know, he, he's gone toe-to-toe -to -toe in South uh, South America with a lot of the athletes. He, he's well-known amongst his peers. He's not as well-known in the fan base in the U.S., obviously in Kona, but he is a guy that we all recognize. We've seen him. I've seen this guy in St. Croix. I've seen this guy down in Brazil, like I said. Very good. Again, out there tackling that blue, blue bicycles um, bike course. It, it's a great course, and you know what's really fun for us is to have them go in and out. So they come in, they go through the hot corner twice. It's really a cool course for spectators. I just kind of get a dose of it before they get out there on the desolate highways. Javier, have you ever done this uh, race course? Have you ever gone out there and uh, ridden uh, the course? Not the whole course, but the first part, let's say, like the first 30K and back. And, and I had a chance to drive the whole course. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's really it's not flat at all. It's like rolling hills up and down all the time. And definitely the wind is going to be a, a key factor like every year. So, yeah, very tough. Javi, you've got a couple of training grounds that you use, Fort Aventura, you've been in Australia, you've been all around the place, uh, you know, to train for a race like this, Fort Aventura would be very good, you know, hot, humid as well. Yeah. Um, you, you, you seem to do very well in the hot and humid races as well. Uh, well, I got better. Um, I wasn't very good at the beginning of my career, I struggled in the heat, but it looks like I'm getting better now as I'm getting older. <laughs> And uh, I've been training what in lots you, of. Uh, yeah, I'm 31 already. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, I've been training in many like uh, hot and humid places, and I think definitely if you want to perform well in this race, you need to get used to it. So this could be a good place for training. The Canary Islands, Fuerteventura is a good place with strong winds as well, and I guess there are many good places in the world. So I've got a question for you. Um, you know, you're an athlete that I see um, that that beats people before the race starts because people are very, it's true, people are very intimidated by you. They respect you so much. They say, oh, Javier's here. I'm racing for second. Chrissy Wellington had that in Kona. But you have that here, I mean, in, in the races you enter. So the guy that I see that people are fearing a little bit like that is Jan Fredino. Do you, you said he's a little inexperienced, but is there anyone that you would step on the start line in an Ironman and say, man, that guy scares me? Well, everyone would scare me, I think, <laughs> the first time because it's just the, the distance and having no experience. But I'm pretty sure that they are all a bit scared about Jan because they don't know what to expect, you sure. know. They know very well each other, but Jan is kind of his first time in gotcha. Kona. And he's a great athlete. They all know he was Olympic champion. He did really well in 70.3. So you don't really know what to expect, and that uh, makes uh, other people fear him. If, if I put you on the spot, did you write down uh, your picks? Do you know? Do you have a, like a one, two, three men and women, or, or, or is that just? Um, yeah, I have my idea. Obviously, I'm gonna go for Spain, and I think uh, Ivan Rania. He's very, very strong, very fit. He did a great Ironman in in Austria this year, and I'm gonna I'm gonna choose him. Yeah, that's who I win. pick too. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah, <laughs> I like your style. What about yeah. the women? About the women. It's hard to predict. I would say maybe Rini. She's okay. really strong. She has experience and a great runner. Car so Frey, yeah, yeah, defending. Yeah. So that's good stuff. I mean, Rania proved to me uh, when he did his first Ironman in Cozumel, you know, yeah. you've raced in, in, in Cozumel, you've raced in Cancun. It's really hot, really, really yeah, humid. Yeah, I, I know Ivan very well. I, I was lucky to train with him for many years, and he loves this kind of conditions. It's good in the heat. So. All right, so the bike coverage today is being brought to you by Specialized and also Javier being one of their top athletes.
at Specialized as well. Andrew Starkowitz, the leader of our men's course, has just gone past Hinalani, so we know that he's uh, just one more street away from the Natural Energy Lab as he's making his way through about 12 miles on the bike course at the moment. Leading our women's is Mary Beth Ellis from the USA, looking very sharp as she makes her way through town and just about to hit Palani Hill. So our women are just about to hit the hot corner for the very second time this morning. They'll hit Palani Road, up to the top, hit the Queen K, and then we'll have our first girls out onto the bike course. But Starkowitz here, Javier, talk a little bit about his bike position. He looks absolutely beautiful. He's got a very flat back. Helmet is just sitting right on those shoulder blades. And his cadence is around about 100 right now. Yeah, very nice. definitely he has a great uh, bike position, very aero, and he looks very comfortable. And for such a long race, I think that's very important. You can be really aero, but you need to be comfortable because then not only you have 180k to, to ride, but also 42k to run. So, yeah, he is a great cyclist and uh, he, he, seems, he seems good, yeah. <laughs> he seems good. And that's, that's understated. I mean, he seems good. He's great on the bike. But what does he do in the run? He talked about, hey, if I ride 415 or, or if I ride as fast as I'm capable of, I, I'm going to put these guys on their heels. I can run 315 to win the race. I disagree. If the guy rides fast enough to, to win on a 315, that means that he's going to put 25, 30 minutes on these guys. They're too good. I, I, I hope to see a great race. I hope to see Starkey just blast the pipes and go really hard on the run. But it's pretty cool, you know, a infusing a little bit of uh, talk a little bit of uh, pre-race talk he has. He's got us uh, buzzing. He's got some of the other athletes interested. Um, so it's great. Over here to the uh, right side of your screen, again, we see these athletes, the women. They're in there. They're, they're in a, a sort of a unique spot. This is a, the steepest climb really early on. They're coming up Polani. We've got um, on your left, Jody Swallow with the bright green shoes. And on the right, we've got Mary Beth Ellis. I like to call her Hot Pants Ellis. She wears those hot pants. <laughs> Mary Beth, she's got great legs. They all do. But look at her go. I'm not hitting on her, Javier. Don't worry. I, I just I see them climbing <laughs> up Polani. This is a heart rate spiker, man. This is rough. You get out of the saddle, that heart rate spikes right back up. But you know what? It's, a, it's, it's just about to be the turn where you head out to 10 or 12 miles into this course. Uh, they'll be running here later. But right now, it is game on. These two, again, training partners, Greg, out of Boulder, Colorado. These two know each other in and out. They run together, swim together, bike together all day every day so yeah under the tutelage, yeah under the tutelage of uh siri lindley so <clears throat> the boulder camp is doing very well today meredith kessler seems to be uh dropped off the back of this now just to give you a little bit of information on marinda carfrey she was five minutes and 50 seconds down out of the swim now last year she was only four and a half minutes down so she's lost another minute and 20 seconds and this year I'm thinking that we've got the strongest women's bike course, you know, um, you know, setting up Natasha Bardman at 48 years old is in there, but Caroline Stefan, Daniela Reef, you know, they're, they're going to be two of the girls, and Leander Cave, they are going to not, you know, hold back today and really make their way toward the front as they get out onto the Queen K as well, Mike. God, you're totally right. I just, I, I mean, I'm looking at that picture. Jody looks great. You know, we first saw her win Clearwater 2010, the 70.3 World Championships on a road bike with an iffy position, very right. moderate. She looks incredible. She has really changed the game four years time. She's leading this race. Look at that, very smooth. She's got a nice position again, like Javier said. She's not, she's aero, but she's comfortable. Yeah, she looks very comfortable and a uh, bit more aggressive the position uh, than uh, Andrew, but uh, yeah, she's doing very well. She's a great cyclist, very good swimmer, and uh, she looks very focused trying to, to break away. I don't, don't mean to put the damper on or anything, but they've only got 100 miles to go on the yeah. bike, so uh, <laughs> they all look day. good this right the realist here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's the one of three of us that has won the race, so yeah. he knows exactly <laughs> Andrew how hard Starkowitz, it is. Yeah, Andrew Starkowitz on the left screen there. You can see that he's rocking the bike a little bit, but that's very typical of Andrew Starkowitz. Mm. The race record is four hours and eight, 18 minutes held by Norman Stadler, who won the race back in 2004 and in 2006. Starkey wants to get after that record, but he also wants to have a good result today. So last year, he had company. This year... He's already accelerated away from the front. And so, but the, the, the question becomes, he's not going with a power meter. He's not going with a heart rate monitor. He's barely going with a speedometer, I'd say. So the question is, is he laying feel. down, throwing down all of it in the 40, 50K at the beginning? So he may get a gap. They may find him again later. That doesn't mean he won't pull away again, but some people like to try a bit more balanced approach. Um, you know, we've seen these Germans and some of the top American guys who used to ride the bike well, they sort of waited till halfway before yeah. they threw down. 
Yeah, it's it's a it's a very long day, and and other great cyclists like Sebastian Kindle, they could they are capable to break the record. But I think it will also depend on the conditions of the wind. That's really important. And I think nowadays you can be a really great cyclist, but you still have to run. You still have to do a good marathon if you want to win the race. It's not only about breaking the the bike course record. You still need to to run well if you ha- want to have any chance. And so th- you know, you're you're a great guy to ask. How important is a record to you? Like a bike record, eh, big deal. The win, very big. But you tell me from a champion's perspective, how important are you know world records, course records, times versus victories? I don't know. I don't know because I never race, but uh, I'm pretty oh, sure any that... Any distance, any distance. Yeah, I think the guys who want to actually win the race, they don't think about the record, you know. You cannot risk too much on the bike if you want to win the race because you need to run a marathon. So I don't think uh, Jan or these guys are, are focused on that. It's just the whole race, not only one of, one of the uh, legs. Yeah, I, th- I, 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 I think that's a wise sort of approach. You know, it, it doesn't really matter. I mean, obviously, yeah, there you go. You can look behind and see. I see red of Fredino. I probably see, you know. Eagle Amarelli uh, and also the, the Pete Jacobs. Of, yep, of Amarelli. And then ba- Pete Jacobs, tw- the 2012 champ. I mean, these guys are tacking in, maybe pull away. But honestly, if the camera angle opened up, we could probably see everyone right back in the mix. I mean, it could be still 20 guys strung out. Yeah. Ben Hoffman was in there early. Tim O'Donnell, a couple of American hopefuls. Well, Those we guys can, swam exceptionally well. They're Mike, in the mix. Yeah, Mike, we can tell you that 29 guys are separated by 2 minutes and 10 seconds. Starkowitz, Armorelli, Fredino, Potts and Jacobs are the top five. Guillaume, also Osplay, Doherty and Van Leader, O'Donnell, top 10. Hoffman, Fromhole, Hawksworth and Albert and Kramer are the top 15. Wiltshire, Matthews, Reed and Jerkowitz, Raylert, top 20. Then you got Fontana, Burkell, Cunningham and Bazzoni in the top 24. Craig Alexander is at 47 seconds down with Ivan Branya. So I wouldn't be uh, at all, you know, at all worried right now because Paul Ambrose and Joe Gambles and Ivan Branya, very good cyclists. They're around Crowy right now, and I think this whole top 29 are going to come as one group here pretty soon at around about the airport. Yeah. Oh, you're right. I think you're very right, and and that's you know that's going to possibly grow. Um, Javier just mentioned Keenley. This is a guy that came third last year, fourth the year before with a flat tire, by the way. This guy is unbelievable. Two-time 70.3 world champion. Yeah, and I'll be looking at the top, like, three of the best cyclists in the sport. They'll be coming a little bit later as we approach Kauai High. Kinley, McKenzie, and Van Hoenaka. These three guys, they are back right now, but they will push through the field. Javier, I don't know if you've noticed over the last couple of years or over the, the course of this Ironman race, but at around about Kauai High up to Javi becomes a very difficult section. It's also about that time when the nutrition starts to kick in. You know, you're just shy of like three hours or so. When you hit Harvey, it becomes downhill and very fast, and that is where the top cyclists start to accelerate away from the rest of the competition. Yeah, definitely. You have more than three hours racing at that point, and uh, when the course gets harder, the wind starts to blow uh, harder, you get crosswinds, and that's where the cyclists have to to make their moves. You know, it's uh, at the beginning, everyone is fresh, everyone can, can ride pretty fast, but when things get harder, when you have three, four hours, it's more complicated. So with uh, leading into our first commercial break of the morning, we must give a big shout out to Active.com. It's a hub for information for training and racing and daily healthy living. The voice of Ironman, Mike Riley, tells us more about Active. Being the voice of Ironman and being a part of Active have, has equal passion. They're both in the endurance world, which I love. When I'm at a finish line working in an event at an Ironman, I know what thrill it is for a lot of people to finish and the training and everything they put into it. The mission of Active is to, to get people active, no matter what it is, whether they want to run, cycle, uh, whether they want to swim, whether they want to play baseball, just to get America and the world active. And that's what we do. And people come to our website every day to find out articles, whether it's on nutrition or how to train or how to register for an Ironman race or a 70.3. And we love being that portal where people can come to first and go, whoa, I can go do this 5K. I can go do this mini triathlon. I can eventually go do Ironman. Inspire to Race is something we put together because we really want to know what is inspiring those individuals to attain the lofty goal of an Ironman to attain 
of getting off the couch and going for a walk around the block, just starting. We want to know what inspires people to do that. Uh, then we want to help them on their journey, inspire you to race, inspire you to build a better life, inspire you to eat better, inspire you to inspire your children to pass it on. Because people come up to me all the time, my gosh, he was a 10-time finisher. Why does he keep doing it? He already did it once. What's inspiring that individual to keep up this lifestyle? And we want to hear about it. My dad used to say, champions are made when no one is watching. Momentum. The power to keep pushing. The discomfort zone. That's what I'm building with chocolate milk. What are you building? Nutrients to refuel, protein to rebuild, backed by science. It all started 25 years ago with a sewing machine, a cyclist, a fashion student, and a simple idea to build a better bike short. And from these humble beginnings, Segoy was born. While our garments have evolved, our core philosophy remains. We ride. We run. We make the gear that we want to wear. We're passionate about creating the best product for athletes, by athletes, so you can look and perform your best. It's always about going faster because it's a race, but it's about going faster with a minimum input of energy possible. Minimising drag and aerodynamics plays a huge role because you want to be able to expend your energy in a way that you get a massive return on that investment, i.e. going further down the road and also saving energy for the marathon, which is a huge determining factor in success or failure in any triathlon. Champions aren't born. Champions are made, will, determination, greatness, tear, get made. I'm Luke McKenzie and you're watching Ironman Live. Coverage today is sponsored by Foster Grant, the official eyewear of Ironman. Sugoi, the official performance apparel of Ironman. Tear, the official swim course sponsor of Iron Man, LifeProof, official sponsor of the Iron Man World Championship, and IronManStore.com, official Iron Man merchandise with free shipping on orders over $100. See, girl, he's come up okay, but he yeah. can't run. Yeah. And then she back to the 2014 Ironman World Championship presented by GoPro. Andrew Starkowitz still leads the field. Jan Fredino's right there. Pete Jacobs, they're all right up there. We can tell you that there is 25 athletes within one minute of our leader at the moment. So as we get set to see a wonderful race unfold in front of our very eyes, we've got Freddie Van Leer, the defending world champion, right in there as well, bringing back uh, Matt Lieto into studio right now. Matt, what did you uh, see out there this morning, mate? Uh, I saw a lot, trying to catch my breath here a little bit, but uh, yeah, there's a lot of action <laughs> going on out there. Hey, seriously, we got some. 
<laughs> brutal out there. But, uh, you know, the athletes have it worse, obviously. They've got a lot of work t- uh, to be done. Obviously. But, uh, obviously. I mean, it's pretty hard here, too. But <laughs> anyways, um, yeah, I no, a lot of action. Sun, sunstroke already. I, Talk, I, I was I was surprised <laughs> to uh, to see some of the gaps out of the swim in the women's field. Lindsay Corbin was pretty far back. 12 um, minutes. Yeah, that's, that's a big gap for her. That puts her out of uh, the race on the bike. You know, things happen later. But uh, so some big gaps in the men's race, like I'd mentioned when I was out there, Victor Del Corral. He's out of the race, as far as I'm concerned. No matter, you can run a 240, but if you're by yourself, five minutes behind the next Whoa. guy, it's going to be trouble. I'll call it right now. He's out. Whoa! Speaking from of those of whom have been out of it by that gap, I think you've he's never in, been that far. He, back. he can still be in it. He can still be in it. Let's just count that all later. Right, yeah. All right, you two, settle down. Sorry. Settle, settle, Sorry, settle. I'm too excited. Too excited. Too First time I've seen this guy. <laughs> yeah, no. Happy to have you, ML2. Um, but can you guys uh, get me up to speed? I haven't been uh, been watching. What's going on in the men's race? Well, well, obviously, we're looking at the women right now, and that's Jody Swallow. The coolest thing are. for me is we're getting a lot of women's action, and we love covering the women's yeah. race. And when we have the footage, we'll share with you. Back to Freddie Van Leerd from Belgium, leading the race last year's winner. But uh, before we talk about this string of athletes that we have here on the men's, the women's is really exciting. As yep. we talked about, uh, Jody Swallow, she got to the front. She left Amanda Stevens a little bit. Mary Beth Ellis leapt up there and joined her. You know, you saw him come out of the water, but yep. right now it's it's um, it's Jody Swallow, Mary Beth Ellis, training partners, yeah. tag team, and wow. trying to get away. Good stuff. Yeah, no, that's awesome. And you know, we expected to see a, a, some kind of group come out with the women. We thought, I think we thought it was going to be more eight or ten, but it's a smaller group than that. But watching uh, Mary Beth Ellis be so aggressive and get up to the front that quickly, uh, that's impressive racing by her. But we definitely see some tactics there. And uh, as we look on the left side of the screen, it does seem still still seem to be Jody Swallow at the front of the race. Uh, but she definitely has a few athletes right behind her. Yeah, so, I think it's uh, probably um, Steven still. I'm going to have to guess. Uh, camera didn't get too close. But I'm guessing it's still Stevens. We probably have splits Welchie, but I'm guessing that what we're looking at here is the men again, but and I'm sorry, that's Jody. So there yep. we go. Uh, Jody, camera angle came at me funny. So that's Jody. We were talking about how good she looks. I mean, remembering back four years ago when she debuted at the longer course, she didn't look as good on the bike, as comfortable or as strong. She's really honed her game, and she Absolutely. looks incredibly aero. Right behind her, Mary Beth Ellis. Um, she looks good. She's always looked good. One thing that I've noticed, Mary Beth Ellis used to have a lot more movement on the bike. You used to see her, you know, side to side, a little bit up and down. She's very smooth and fluid. Now, Mary Beth, or sorry, Meredith Kessler, MBK, right behind MBE. So Meredith Kessler, <laughs> our gal from the US of A, she's right in there. And man, this is an elite crew. I love seeing Meredith let these other two yep. set the tempo, give her a little refresher, a little breather, not exhaust the mental energy, which I think is yep. the key to her success today. All right, so we're in our top three right now. They are making big ground on the rest of the field. There's seven seconds that separate Meredith Kessler, Mary Beth Ellis, and Jody Swallow from each other. Then it's a minute and 34 seconds back to Amanda Stevens, Liz, Liz Blatchford, and Gina Crawford. We've got Daniela Rife at 2.27. So these girls are losing a little bit of time. Daniela Rife, Rachel Joyce, Carolyn Stephan, Michelle Vesterby, and Leander Cave. Now that's five of the strongest girls on our bike course here today. So those girls are losing a little bit of time. Don't be too concerned about that. Once we get out to Waikoloa, when the wind starts to blow, that's all going to change around. Now, guys, we've got 27 guys that are all within one minute. 27 guys in 27th place. It's Ivan Rania, Terenzo Bazzoni, Tim Van Berkel, Daniel Fontana, Tim Reed, Richie Cunningham, Andreas Raylert, Jerkowitz Gambles, Wiltshire, and Craig Alexander, the three-time champion, in 17th place at 47 seconds down. Paul Matthews is in there. Hawksworth, Fromhold, Doherty, Gilliam, Potts, Hoffman, Jacobs, O'Donnell, Osplay, Fredino, Freddie Van Leer, Igor Armorelli, and our leader is still Andrew Starkowitz. So he's pulling these guys there through this is. competition right now. But yeah. one minute between 27 guys, you know what that is? That is 10 yeah. metres apart the whole way through one minute. Yeah, absolutely. And good it's luck a, overtaken. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, good luck uh, being able to say all those names like you did there. Catch a breath. But uh, it's, uh, you know, tight, tight field. You know, they're all, as you said, legal distance. But, you know, right now they're all spread They're all spread over that minute, but they're all going. At, that's, a, that's, a, that's a fast pace right now. So we're going to see some athletes popping off and popping off pretty dramatically, I think, in that top 27. Probably not for another 10 or 15 miles, but anybody that's at this race is incredibly fit and can go hard for, you know, 40, 50 miles. But we're going to see someone like Andrew Starkwitz, who we see on our left side of the screen, he's going to start slowly kind of breaking that elastic band. 
And, and I think it's worth talking about when you give the effort you give. So yes. it's, it's, it's hard. In no other Ironman do you want to ride as hard as you can for 40 or 50K, exactly. then settle, and then ride hard again. So obviously athletes train for that. Some athletes choose not to. Tim O'Donnell last year said, I'll give it away. I'll bring it back later. But where I focus now is a Starkowitz. You know, the guy says he wants to break the course record. Cool, I'd love to see that too. It's fun. But is his best <laughs> chance of doing that, laying down 30 miles an hour until you until you suffer, regrouping and doing it again, or would it be more wise to take an approach of say riding with your crew, riding with the people, and then absolutely drilling the final 52 well, miles from Javi? Yeah, well, yeah. talk about what's happened traditionally over the last you know 10 years, decade. It's always been the same. Your brother Matt was Who's his uh, brother. Um, CL. Chris Lieto, that's CL1. Right. Yeah, yeah, Chris Lieto. So Chris, Chris has um, been the guy that's usually gotten in between uh, Kauai High, which is a, you know just over 40 miles, right up yeah. to that you know 60 mile mark. Um, that's where Chris Lieto used to make his move on yeah. the way back to town. Now Sebastian Kinlay, Starkowitz, Luke McKenzie, right in that section, the section in between Kauai High and Harvey in return. Yeah. That's always the biking section that the race breaks up. Absolutely. So you know these guys can hang until about 40 miles with Starkowitz, but I don't believe that they can hang any further. No, I think you're right, and I think you're right with different tactics for different people. But if to back to your point, Michael, if Andrew Starkowitz wants to break the bike course record, I think he has to do it from the beginning mm -hmm. and it, you know he might have to break some people as he goes there but right now we're looking at uh, Meredith Kessler yeah. and, and you know what I love it so very great job to the motos and the cameras out there thank you so much because we love to see these pictures we're not just staring at the leader we're seeing the top three we see them all together I love when they go back and forth like that so you know again a kudos from my end this is Meredith Kessler she is conserving energy I spoke with her before the race yeah. I just have to say one of the things that she did this year that means I think to me a nice step up is she cut back on the racing. Sure, she's more physically fresh, but mentally she needs to be fresh enough to dig. Last year she said, you know what, I got to mile 20 of the run, and I just got tired. I just didn't feel like digging. Yeah. Well, there it is. There's, there, there's your, now you're seventh instead of third. So Absolutely. for Meredith, she's really letting these girls set the tempo, which lets her rest. Her yes, mind. and uh, one of our top age groupers, well, we wouldn't say top age group, but I think he is. He's pretty good. Apollo Anton Ono has just exited the water in one hour and 45 seconds today. So the Team Chocolate Milk, milk uh, Refuel Athlete, one hour and 45 seconds. He's wow. won eight Olympic That's medals in short track speed skating. And today, one hour, are you kidding me? Paula Newby Fraser has worked her magic uh, again. Coach of the Year Award. Training, yeah, training yeah. Apollo. So it's pretty good, isn't it? That's great. Wow, what an impressive. And you know, this guy, I spoke with him before the race. I said, hey, Apollo, guess what? You've actually got a little pressure on you because we expect something from yeah. you. Last year, we didn't expect Heinz Ward to light it up and go 10 hours, but we kind of expect that of you. Absolutely. He and was he, scared. You know, he's, uh, we say Paul is getting the Good Coach stuff. of the Year award, but uh, you know, she was. She started with a pretty good athlete to, to start working with, right? Like that guy's got a pedigree. He's got a great engine. But swimming often is the hardest thing for great athletes to pick up, and an hour there is is pretty impressive. But uh, right now we see a close up of Jody Swallow and Michael. Correct, talking earlier about how much better she looks on a bike. She looks smooth. Um, she looks a little quieter, you know, with her upper body than she used to. I mean, she, she the last World Championship she won uh, down at uh, Clearwater. She was on a road bike in 2010. Road yeah. bike. She got in there. Granted, she, it was a tired Julie Divins. She rode it away from Julie Divins. She rode it away from the entire field on, on a, a road, road bike. bike. She's clearly always had the engine. The girl has the engine. For sure. Right now, what I like when I see this athlete is serially trained, serially prepped. That means she's very positive. That means she's very motivated. That's a good thing coming into this race. She also has a consistency and a nice build. No injuries. She raced well, beat Rachel Joyce in Boulder at the 70.3 back in June. Carried that trajectory along. Almost, you know, almost won South Africa Ironman early in the season. You know, lost it very late. But look at this here. Oh, are you saying that Meredith there, Kessler's falling off a bit? No, I'm um, saying that it looks like she's going for a pass. And oh, oh. Uh, she's she's going to go for a pass. And it looks like she will likely go by both of these athletes. Sitting up, nonetheless. Yeah, That's sitting unheard up. of. You don't usually sit up it's a to little, come by. It's a Is little it, bit of a climb. But, Michael, just a good to point out kind of the drafting rules or the, the rules that the athletes have to abide by. Uh, they have to be, obviously, over 10 meters uh, behind each other. But when they make a pass, if they're passing an athlete that is just at the legal distance behind the athlete in front of them, they have to go all the way around. So that's why you didn't see Meredith uh, Kessler just jump in between. But now, you know, she was shadowing before. Now she's going to the front. She's taking uh, a little bit of aggression out there. But, you know, I, do you think these athletes are being uh, spurred on by the fact they look around and some of the other pre-race favorites yeah. aren't with yeah, them? Yeah, yeah. And guess what? It's a smart move because 
if you have three, you know, I'd like to see Mary Beth Ellis take the lead as well, because <laughs> if you have three, let's do it. One, they two, will. three, yeah, take a lead exchange, say, she you know will. what, it's not drafting, and you can't slipstream, you cannot ride up to the wheel and pass over. I'm sure they've talked about this before. I'm sure that they're going to roll over and do this. Yeah. They, they've got to do it. So here you go. So now M um, MBK, Meredith Kessler, is in front. Let it happen naturally. Ride, yeah. cycle through, get your pulls, if you will, and, and relieve that mental energy from the leader. Exactly. So when you when you feel good, when you feel good, pull through. And it, good good talking about the drafting distance. Right in Kona is an easy spot to be able to know when the athletes are legal distance. Sometimes if our camera angle is behind people, it you know it might seem like the athletes are drafting or a little closer, but they have those little reflective dots. We call them pot dots. Those are all exactly legal distance apart. And as we look at these women, you can see that they're over the distance between those and, pot and dots. And also, guys, that's how our officials have been trained Absolutely. as well. So you look Looking at our top three girls, Meredith Kessler, Mary Beth Ellis, and Jodie Swallow. They seem to have dropped Dr. Amanda Stevens. So Mary mm -hmm. Beth Ellis, who was down a little bit after the first part of the swim, about 20 seconds or so, has made her way up into that group. Now, just a little bit of an update on our men's race while we're repositioning our cameras at the moment as we just go away from that graphic. We can tell you that Andrew Starkowitz has an eight-second lead now on Eagle Armorelli. Andy Potts is right in there. Jan Fredino is right up there at the moment. So I tell you what, these guys are doing very, very well at the moment. So good on those guys at the at this point in time. And Freddie Van Leer is sitting in fourth spot wow. as well. So just rounding out that top five again, it's Freddie Van Leer, Andrew Starkowitz. We've also got Eagle Armorelli and in there, Andy Potts as well. So and that's the top five guys as they go through uh, just past the and right, airport. Yep. So and right now, this is the look these women are going to see for a while now. you got a little bit of grass, but you got a lot of lava. So this is a hard, kind of meaty section of the course. One thing to remind you guys back home, if you're watching us, our social media, we have a really good social media sort of situation going on here. If you want to follow us on Twitter, Iron Man Live is a Twitter handle, at Iron Man Try, obviously, as well as Facebook, you know, Iron Man forward slash um, Iron Man, and as well on Twitter and Instagram. Come check us out, shoot us some questions. Remember, hashtag I am Kona. Put the questions out there, put the vibe, also share your information. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll get as, uh, answers to as many questions as we can while we're out there. Right now, we watch the lead women cycle away up a little riser on the way out of town. Uh, but, yeah, those women are working together quite well. And as you said, Michael, you gotta, you got to let it come. You don't want to force it. If you're feeling good, go to the front and push it. But right now, we've got another athlete coming through, pushing through. I think that's actually one of our male athletes, Michael. But we'll, uh, we'll be able to get uh, well, a closer shot. If it is, shot. I hope he's pushing through. You I know, the thing, the thing is, that five-minute gap, it doesn't mean a lot, but it means enough. So, again, we could have someone back there, one of our slower swimmers. Um, but nonetheless, we'll see usually a slower swimming male pro is pretty good on the bike, and they usually roll right on through and get away from the women's yeah, race. It's, a good observation. it's not uncommon. So the nice thing, again, and we'll highlight it, is these separate starts. It really makes it nice. A um, little picture of our early part of the bike ride riding up Polani here away again from our pro race. Um, but good stuff, good stuff today. World champion speed skater Apollo Ono has come out of retirement, teamed up with Built by Chocolate Milk, and today faces the biggest athletic challenge of his career. We sat down with Apollo and got his thoughts about coming to Kona and aiming to conquer the Ironman World Championship. Let's take a look at this. Since I retired in 2010, my switch was off. It was, it was, my switch was on, like my high performance mechanism was on when it came to like my business and trying different ventures and exploring new opportunities and different challenges. But from a pure physical challenge sporting event, it was completely off. And what I realized when I, I didn't know this, when I first started this entire journey and experience was that how much I need things like this in my life. And I didn't know how amazing it was here on this island until I got here. And then it kind of like, I was like, I made the right decision. This is, this is it. This is what thousands and thousands of people all across the globe dedicate their entire lives for to be here. Maybe not to win, not to be top 10, because they want to be at the start line and they want to experience that. It's been a huge transformation for me, physically, mentally, I think along this process. And uh, yeah, I mean, I'm no stranger to, I guess, severe circumstance, um, but this happens to be a totally different environment. And I'm, I th to me, that, that's the exciting part. The exciting part is like, man, you, you might cramp up or something might happen, you might not finish. If you don't do this thing properly or you're not hydrating or something might actually happen to you physically or mentally, you might just crack and break down. That's a, re that's a, re that's a reality. 
I think it will be a life changer. I think it'll be positive. And if I anticipate correctly, I think I'll come out of this thing a significantly stronger person mentally um, for the rest of my life. So Apollo Ono out on the bike course at the moment. We can see that uh, after a one hour and 45 second swim there today, absolutely brilliant. He almost cracked the hour here in Kona, which is uh, unbelievable for any rookie to come out. But uh, a little eight lead time, change again here. Yeah, eight time champion speed skater doing a great job of a team chocolate milk. He's on the way. He's refueling at the moment out onto the course. So we've got another lead change as we see Jody Swallow going back into the lead here. Mary Beth Ellis just slipping into third position. Mary, um, we got Meredith Kessler up into second, guys. Yeah, good stuff. Thanks, Greg. I mean, it is the women, you know, we see Jody back in the front indicating that, you know, I think one thing, too, they feel, and you know this, Matt, once that you fall into that second place, you're sitting back the legal distance, 12 meters, it feels easy. You can sit up, you're on the air bars, wow, this is easy, i got to keep the pace on. So you have a, a sort of a disconnect with how hard you're actually riding until you're in front. So often it's just a it's just an unintentional roundabout. You go up front, it feels hard, or you slow and you don't realize it's the second person. You know, again, either Mary Beth is being very smart or she doesn't feel uh, like she can take the lead. Yeah, and I mean you gain you gain motivation and you feel like you you're working less hard than the athletes in front of you, even if you're not getting uh, advantage from drafting. And, and Mary Beth, it seems at this point, you know, she's she's staying very legal, but yeah, she's not feeling yet that she's maybe recovered enough from the swim. And listen, Let's not forget that she was the athlete that had to put a bit of an effort to get up to those two girls, right? So uh, she put her effort in early. Um, right now, it doesn't matter. The, nothing in the, mat the race, no, nobody's counting who's in the lead right now. It just matters at the end of the race, right? So right now, she's conserving. She knows she's in the front. She knows that they're still dropping. Uh, you know, Danielle Reef and some of the other favorites, um, they're putting time into them. So she's getting that information show. Why not stay in the back? But right now, Jody Swallow trying to get information from our cameraman. Maybe she's, uh, you know, who knows what she's talking about. But right now, she looks she looks really smooth. It doesn't look like she's pressing or, you know, going above what she's capable of. And the racing at the end of the year, looking at what she did, 70.3 Worlds, I mean, she's ready for a great performance today. I, I think that Jody's only worried about one person. I think she's worried about Danielle Reef. And, you um, think so? She's okay. She's going to be you know, making her way to the front of the course because uh, Daniela Reef, let's talk about her for a little bit. Uh, you know, she's won three Ironmans in a space of three months, 70.3 Ironman World Champion in Montreal five weeks ago. And the girl rode eight minutes into the fastest woman on the bike two years ago, Leander Cave, yeah. in a 70.3 race. So the, if you do the math, I mean, you know, if she rides eight minutes into her, you know, in a 70.3 race, what's she going to do here? I mean, we know that she was a little bit back off the, uh, the swim this morning. She lost a little bit of time to our top three at the moment. But you know it's coming. The steam train is just warming up and gathering momentum. The locomotion is going to come through at about Waikoloa, and then it's going to take, uh, take hand. But I think that right now Jody Swallow wants to know exactly where those faster bike girls are because I think that she feels as she's the, th the strongest girl in these three off the front. Absolutely. I so. And I think, you know, she was one that drove the pace as well, uh, you know, at 70.3 Worlds not so long ago. And for her to look for her to look around and not see Daniela, that's going to motivate her even more. You know, her dream is to win this race. She doesn't really, uh, you know, she's an athlete that to me, you know, a podium is not going to be as important. She wants to win this race. So she's taking the bull by the horn, so to speak, and going to the front and setting as fast a pace as she can so that whoever's in these three has the opportunity to win out of this race. So SRAM, the official pro-neutral race support today, provider of the Ironman US Series. They're all out in force. We saw them yesterday just, uh, you know, having a dry run out there. They look very good on their mopeds. They do. All of our SRAM neutral support race vehicles have a set of zip wheels on the back as well, so they will provide neutral support to whoever has troubles out on course. And that's a great thing, guys. Yeah, Michael, as a pro, how great does that feel? Even when you're setting up your, your bike the night before the race, what do you have to put on it to know that there's going to be support right behind you? And you can see them right behind you. Well, I think the prepared professional, Matt, would have spares nonetheless because you have to be ready. And I say that because in the past, Chrissy Wellington had a flat tire, had to change herself, even if there is incredible support by SRAM. You you have them there, you don't count on them, you expect them if you need them. The it feels first nice, thing you do, it? it feels great. The guys, first thing uh, you do guys, is. Guys, a couple of words were exchanged right there between Jody Swallow and Meredith Kessler. Do you think that what Jody, you think was? Jody was the one that looked over first? Do you think that she was saying, we've got to keep this pace up or it, something like that? It's either that or honestly, I know Jody too. She races with a bit of anger, which is a good thing. She could have been yelling at Meredith because I think that's something we forgot to mention. This is the dynamic of the race. You don't get out there and it's all hugs and kisses. She might have said, 
stop pulling through, stop doing this, or go harder. It could have been anything. These girls yell at each other. It happens. The guys, too. And so it very well might have been, what are you doing? Anything. It could have been anything. Do you think anything. it comes down to breaking of momentum? Perhaps it can be, but sure. I think I think right now this group, if, you know, if they're smart, they're going to want to, you know, they should have some camaraderie. Right now, they should be happy if should. these three. They should. They should be happy if it's these three off the bike first. If they work together uh, wisely and you know let each other go in front when they can, that's going to be the best for the three of them. They're going to have the best chance to have a winner out of this race if they work together collectively. I think we're talking too early there, Matt. Maybe I think a that bit. Reef of course. and Cave and, uh, and Stefan. I'm saying Joyce. You guys oh, are going to have a Joyce, Joyce uh, so on the way. And then you've got Marinda Carfrey who's going to be stalking at the back. Now, let's, let's just fast forward a little bit and uh, you know go through it. And Hey, if Daniela Reef does get off with the lead, how far can she give up to Marinda Carfrey? I'm saying about 15 minutes. I know, again, I think we're too early to start talking about yeah. what kind of gap she's going to have yeah. off the lead because she's still chasing. But, uh, right. you know, we never know what kind of day she's having. We expected her to be in the front of the group of the swim, and well, she, she's not there. So Meredith Kessler yeah. is right now. She's yeah, she at the is. front of the race and uh, just going through that nutrition, just getting some H2O. Down the belly there, you can see that she's uh, going through those aid stations. You can see that uh, the athletes are... Having to, you know, slow down a little bit uh, as they go through there with momentum. And uh, you know that these uh, bottles are, are being given to them there. She takes some power bar perform on at the moment. So let's have a look at uh, Meredith Kessler right now. She's the Ironman New Zealand champion, 2014 70.3 Ironman US champion in St. George, Utah. 55-time Ironman finisher. That wow. absolutely blows that me away. Crazy. She represents the United States, and she's only been competing as a pro for just over three years. Yeah, that's crazy. And, you know, we just saw her go through the aid station. She's going through again. And a very important part, obviously, we talked about, and we're going to talk about all day, how important nutrition is and staying cool. You know, Meredith Erty, that's her second water bottle she's grabbed and mm -hmm. taken some water out of. As you said, she grabbed some Perform as well. But, you know, what adds to that, you know, she's staying cool. You know, noticing the difference, last year she wore an aero helmet. This year, she's wearing more of a road helmet that keeps you cooler. Uh, let's speak a bit about the differences in uh, choice of headwear and, you know, different athletes that have their strengths. You know, if they feel like they're going to overheat a little bit, they're going to, you know, Meredith has decided last year, maybe she got a little bit hot. She wants to be able to pour that cold water over her head. Aerodynamics maybe a little less important uh, and staying cool is, is at the top of her list. All right, Ironman.com forward slash nutrition guide. If you want to learn about Ironman nutrition, that's where you need to go. Ironman.com forward slash nutrition guide. Now you bring up a great point there, Matt, and Michael, I want your input on this one too, is that let's let's give an, uh, give an aero helmet as opposed to, you know, sodium loss and, and the sweat rate. Is there any correlation? Well, certainly. I mean, yeah. I think if you don't have a helmet that achieves good ventilation, that achieves good cooling, you're going to sweat more. Okay, the other thing is if you can't cool yourself and feel better by pouring cold water on your head, i.e. dripping cold water through the vents, you're, you're giving yourself a little bit of a disadvantage. So most of the helmets these days achieve some sort of ventilation. This one that Jody has on doesn't look like any to me. It brings back days of Paul and Newby Fraser torching it out there with a, with a you know, ventless, the ventless yeah. wonder. But it, it can be achieved. Everybody has a different sweat rate. Everybody handles that perspiration flying down their face a different way. To me, the key thing is you're going to Hawaii, know you're going to sweat a yep. lot. Okay, know you're going to lose a lot of fluids all, all day long. When you're on the bike, and this comes to some of the questions we've had from Twitter, this comes to our segment now naturally just on the bike, it is all about nutrition. They say it's the fourth sport. It's 100% the fourth sport. Have a plan, follow the plan, modify the plan where you need to. If these athletes are not drinking in these early stages, yeah. if they're not staying ahead of that, they will get behind, they will find a dip as they're coming down off Javi, Absolutely. 60, 70 miles, 100, 110 K, it comes back, it always does. Yeah, you're right, you know, that's when it hits you is later in the race, but the time that you can do something about it is now. You know, yeah. getting a bunch of water late in the race isn't necessarily going to help you so much. But, yeah, as we have a close-up of uh, Meredith Kessler, she just took a little bit of sip of water. She's focused on that, and she's focused on riding her bike smooth and staying in, in contact with the front of the race. And it, it looks like she's comfortable. doesn't look like she's pressing. It, she's pushing too hard. She looks very, very smooth. I, I think they all look good, and yeah. I think that's how good these three athletes are. You know, they can ride fast, get away, make an advantage, but not be on the limit, on the rivet. In the men's race, you do have to put a little bit of pressure on like that. These gals they're actually quite smart because they do know there's that camaraderie but they also in the back of their heads every one of these girls is saying 
Hmm, I wonder where Rachel is. You yeah. know, that girl's just really good on the bike and she's super yeah. fit right now. Hmm, Danielle Harif, this girl could tear some, you know, some doors off here. Caroline Stephan. So they're waiting. Yep. Caroline Stephan, this girl is a podium. You know, Mac has been working there. She's got a little edge, a new change to her program. So all these girls are back there and you just have to wait and wonder, one out and back in this race and that's in Javi. That's over halfway before yeah. they can see where everyone is. Guys, we're getting a lot of questions via Twitter at the moment about uh, the wattage, the average speeds and uh, the calorie intakes and all that. We're going to have training peaks on a little bit later on in the morning here. We're going to go through all that. So we will get to that question and answer it for you as best as we can. But training peaks, they're going to bring a full log down on the average watts uh, right up until that point of the course. So don't worry about that. We will get to it. And uh, I did get one question uh, from Isaac uh, down here. And he said, OK, we know about the bikers right now and who's the fastest out there. Maybe Andy Starkowitz. But he said, who's the fastest runner? And I think, you know, it's a, it's a toss up because... Pete uh, Jacobs, when he won, ran a 2.44. Craig Alexander, when he won, ran a 2.41. He's run a 2.42, you know. And then also Bart Arnott's ran a 2.44 last year. So yeah. know, let's talk about who, the present. Let's talk I know about who the present. Gonna say. Hey. Let's talk about the present. So those times, the 2.41 of Pete, all that stuff, it was the past. Yeah. Kona knows no past. I'm okay. sorry to the past. No but Get here's the, the thing. Rania is an amazing, proven talent yeah. who is running very well in the cool weather. He's done very well in the hot. I'm picking Rania and Arnott's. Those guys can run fast. Fastest runner, Rania. Who have you got? Uh, I think it's uh, I think it's Ferdino. Uh, Rania is there, but I think Ferdino could run through uh, jogging in a 116 on this course. That might not work in the end, but I think he <laughs> has the ability. <laughs> after, and we're not just talking about runners. You know, we know Ivan can run a 10k very fast. We're talking runners after a very very hard bike ride. And I think Ferdino so. Like is when Rania, so like when Rania ran 247 in Cozumel, that was yeah, pretty, it's all downhill, good. isn't so, it? Um, <laughs> no, but here, what about the women? Good um, question. Let's keep it going. Yeah. Can we? Or we have time. Let's yeah. say this: the fastest <laughs> women. Obviously, Marinda Carfrey has shown that she can do some damage. You know who's here that we haven't mentioned because she's been away for a while? Kelly Williamson. Yeah. Kate Snow. Those yep. girls are dangerous in the, in the 250 to 255 c category yep. in good hot conditions. Kelly Williamson, 255 in Ironman, Texas this year. Yep. Nobody even talks about her because Wheels. she's been missing. She could run her way into top five, so top you, eight. So you didn't ask me about the men. Talk to me, Welchie. Who's your fastest man I'm on the going, course? Going, I'm <laughs> going with the Aunt Ferdino for sure. And oh, well. on the women's, I'm going for Marinda. And uh, Caitlin Snow has been the girl on paper that's put it down over the last couple of years. Absolutely. And uh, she's been going consistently under three hours now. So, you know, definitely Marinda Carfrey with the 250-38 last year. But let's get back to the action, boys, as we see a lot of our age group is no going down through the hot corner there. We haven't had any incidents to speak of. It's no. been very, very clear sailing through our fastest corner of the bike course today. But as we look out onto the Queen Ka'umano Highway, and we're getting right into the meat of the course right now, we can see that the athletes, as they approach Mauna Loa and Mauna Kea, this is exactly where the vacuum happens. This is where the leeward side of the island and the windward silent, uh, side of the island meet. This is where the wind comes from. The wind comes from the other side of the island. Once they get up into that Waikoloa region, that's where it starts to blow. Now, when we looked at our forecast this morning, Matt, Michael and I saw we, we did see winds out of the northeast at okay. 25 miles oh, an wow. hour at 9 o'clock this morning. Wow, that's going to that's gonna do some damage to the uh, to the front of the race and the back of the race for sure. But, um, you know, these women are, are chugging along right now. As we said, right now it seems like they're very legal distance and, uh, you know, motoring towards the challenging part of the course. You know, the first challenge the course really offers uh, the big challenge is, uh, you know, riding up to Havi. You're going to take a left down Kauai High, then a right up to Havi, and um, you get some pretty good climbs right out of that first turn. And, uh, you know, these athletes are going to, you know, that, that might be where things get stretched out a little bit and that camaraderie might change. But right now, back to, uh, you know, the technical, you know, the only real turns in this course. We've got to turn around Javi, but turning uh, hard left down Polani as it's going a pretty fast rate right there. Um, often, as Greg said, sometimes we'll have some slide outs from athletes coming together. But having a split, here we go. One of our uh, challenge athletes uh, coming through. Uh, great work there. But um, with the split fields, the men and women starting at different times, Greg, I think that's going to help with there being a little less confusion and maybe a little less trouble around a corner like that. Yeah, exactly. So we're an hour and 27 minutes into the race right now uh, for our age group women and an hour and 37 in for our age group men. And you can see they're just taking their time. One of our athletes there having a flat tyre right at the hot corner there. So just put the bike up against the side there, whacking the tyre off and putting another one on all in the space of about three or four minutes for an age group athlete there. So you can see just uh, working that tyre and working that tube inside of the rim there as they get ready to uh, get that tyre pumped That's up. That's a true 
Drew Ashley back out right there the chasing his own flag, and also not on neutral. Pretty yeah. early in the race right there. And yeah. also looked like Alex Zanardi just going through as well, one of our paracyclists out there in the race today. So Alex, a Formula One, uh, you know, former racer, and uh, still racing in the Grand Prix BMW series in which oh, wow. he won last year overall in Europe. So Alex Zanardi, a Formula One, uh, you know, race car driver, is out on course today, as is Apollo uh, oh no, Dave McGilvray, the Boston Marathon uh, race director, is with us today. That was 25 years to the day that he did his last race here in 89. Sister wow. Madonna Buddha at 84 years of age is in the race today. And we've got our two astronauts. We've got Chris Cassidy from the United States and Luca Parmentano as well from Italy. Now, these two guys spent six months at the International Space Station. Wow. And they <laughs> and they were talking about it the other day. And uh, it was funny, uh, a couple of stories. I, I don't think we've got time to share them all. But um, we did calculate that up at 250 miles into the atmosphere, that's, a, that's how far they are up at the uh, International Space Station, they go five miles per second. So I figured out exactly how fast it would take uh, Chris and Luca to do the race today. How far? 29.1 seconds. That's 29 impressive. Seconds. That's quick moving. You know, what, you know what? Being up there, no gravity, is there like a major muscle atrophy going on? Because, I mean, <laughs> how, how do you train when there's no load on the muscles of that? But cool yeah. stuff. Thanks for sharing. I mean, yeah, lots neat, of neat stuff and very different crew that comes to Kona this year. Um, again, we're looking at some athletes streaming out um, of Transition 1. It's You'll see that that it, it's not just age group athletes to do this. We mentioned Chris McCormack having trouble before yeah. there at that spot. It's Absolutely. a tricky spot. Your head's everywhere else. Back to the women in our top picture here. Again, this is Jody Swallow. We have been getting Twitter updates, Twitter questions asking about a penalty. There's rumors of a penalty. I promise folks at home, as soon as we know if there was a penalty handed out, we will let you know. And, and that's just information that will come to us maybe ahead of you all, but we'll get it to you as soon as we have that reliably uh, transmitted data. We'll give it to you. Promise. Okay, yep. quick update on the men's course. Jan Fredino has now gone into the lead, followed by Freddie Van Lead. One second down. Uh, number 15, that is Andy Ponce. He is in third place at two seconds down. Andrew Starkowitz, three seconds down. The four seconds down, Igor Armorelli from Brazil. So our top five right now are still out in front and extending their lead. So as soon as we get a split, when they all go through that 30-mile uh, marker, we'll let you know exactly. But Jan Fredino has now seized the lead from Andy Starkowitz. Big, uh, big surprise. You know, yeah. and just just to mention, too, touching on the penalties, and, and we'll get this out ahead of time while we have a bit of time, is often people forget, okay, there's one, there's two time penalties, new for 2014, one time penalty, intentional littering. Intentional littering is a four-minute time penalty. Uh, that's new for 2014. If you throw trash outside of an aid station on purpose, in t unintentional, no big deal, stop yeah. and go. Drafting is the other one, four minutes. Okay, everything else outside those two penalties are going to be stop and go. So, right, so sometimes... Mike, Mike, explain to us, mate. If we're going through the aid station yes, like this, yes, where sir. do they dump their bottles? So you have to dump it within sight of the aid station. So if you can see that aid station, there's, of course, a trash area. But if you have to... In, right now, it's fair game. There you go. That's a free free toss. She can do this. There'll be a last chance throw. Yep. When you see that, you're still within sight of the aid station. You may ditch your trash. You cannot wait two minutes, one minute, anything. You can't wait past that. If you do, you can get a penalty. We'll see the last chance probably right here or it's gone. If she were to throw now on purpose, yes, a penalty would be served, four minutes. So the other thing that we look at is a stop and go. And here's where, where we have to examine the rule book. There are things that we don't always know. Blocking, failure to overtake is a big one. Okay, failure to overtake is a tough penalty. What that means is if you start to pass, start to pass, start to pass, and you don't make it in yep. 20 seconds, what happens? Penalty. penalty. And if you get that, it, it, it is important that you know that is a penalty. So, you know, you can't start a pass. You can't enter the zone and then drop back and say, I didn't mean to. You, if you enter the zone, it's pull over and go for it. Well, and Michael, that's a good good thing to point out is when you've got a line like this on the left, we've got the men's field. And uh, the, the rule I spoke of earlier where you can't slot in if the person in front of you is legal distance behind. What that means, if you're 12th place and you want to pass the guy in front of you and everybody's legal distance, you have to pass everyone in that pro field if they're legal distance apart, right? So that can be tough, tough work, and you'll end up getting penalties to those guys that just maybe don't have the energy. Right now, Jan Ferdino looking around Whoa, at his bicycle. Oh, Jan Looks like Jan Ferdino, Ferdino another off flat the tire. Of the, road, the 2014 tire. Ironman World Championship wow. presented by GoPro. There's been a turn of events leading the race. Jan Ferdino has now pulled across to the side of the road 
and is having difficulty. We think it's a flat tire, guys. This is yep. absolutely astonishing. Looks like a flat tire. That was something that plagued him at his Ironman earlier this year in Frankfurt. It did look like something or somebody stopped next to him, so we're hoping sure. that was the, ve the support Check. vehicle. And, yep. and we know they're there quick, and so this is a case of get him in the race, keep him in the race. Right now, other athletes, competitors are breathing a sigh of relief. Hey, Ferdino, he's on the side of the road, but not for long. It does hurt, though, no matter how quick that tire change yep. is, it hurts. So the goal for Fredino is to say, okay, you know what? I need to keep the pressure down. I need to keep the pressure down. Don't fight. Don't work. You know, Fredino, he's a rookie here. We got to catch up with Fredino and see what it was like to be a rookie at his experience level, a rookie in Kona. Let's hear from Jan. Jan. I don't know why, if this is sort of like picking on the new guy, but um, <laughs> a lot of people do uh, seem to think that I'll do well here. So I'm a first timer. I'm, uh, I'm a Kona rookie and um, I'm, I'm loving it, you know, and that's exactly um, the energy that I'm taking into it. You know, it's new, it's fresh, um, I'm fit. And to me, really, I've, I've got no pressure. I'm just happy, happily looking forward to race day and, and, um, and taking it all up. All right, so Fredino on the side of the road uh, there, just uh, fixing a tire out here. He's just gone past the Waikoloa Resort as well. This is the time of the race that the wind is starting to kick up. As we looked at our forecast this morning, 25 miles an hour wind predicted today. We will get a, a chance to talk to somebody out on course. But a 2008 Olympic gold medalist finished second at the Ironman 70.3 World Championship to our earlier guest, uh, Provided by Specialized today, that was Javier Gomez making his Kona debut, wearing number nine today. And the German set a record time, 2.43 in the marathon at the European Ironman Championship earlier this year. And now we look at the uh, the rest of the guys up here. We've got Andy Potts on screen right now, and he looks like he's got his head down, working very hard, gentlemen, I think that the wind is up. You can look at the grass on the side of the road there. It is howling. Yeah, no, it, it looks like he's working hard and he didn't uh, he didn't hesitate to go to the front and push the pace. And let's touch on what Jan Ferdino is dealing with or has dealt with here. You know, it's not a flat tire isn't isn't the end to his race. He dealt with a few of those, like we said, in Frankfurt. But, I mean, he couldn't be have been in a better position when getting a flat tire. At the front of the race, he then has those 27 guys that we spoke of that at what, uh, recently were within a minute of each other. He has all those guys still coming by him as a support vehicle helps him out. You know, I was in the lead group at uh, World Champs when Craig Alexander got a flat tire and he was gone and back before we could blink an eye. You know, he, he was the right race. back there. And, and he, he won the race. And he won the race. race. So that's that is good a, stuff. A, yeah, great and, point. And here's, here's last year's winner, Freddie Van Leer from Belgium. And we've got another athlete overtaking. That is Pete. No, I'm sorry, Trek. We've got Tim, Tim O'Donnell. O'Donnell. Look at Tim O'Donnell, last year's fifth place finisher, finisher, America's top finisher last year, putting his nose out there saying, I want to get aggressive here, I want to get after it. His coach this year, a change for him, Mark Allen, yeah. has obviously given him some secrets. He's a big rival to that man, Mr. Andy Potts. He's coming through and saying, I can do a little work as well. Yeah. Very new for this guy. Yeah, right now you've got two two of the guys that are the, you know, quote unquote hopes for the American first place, you know, battling it out, pushing the pace. Maybe there is some camaraderie, but those guys are pushing right now. And Tim O'Donnell, the weakness for him last year was the bike. You know, and right after the race, the he said, the yeah, he said, we man, I didn't, about. yeah, he said, I didn't ride well. I had a bad bike ride. And right now he's making sure he's in position. So if he has a little spell where he's not riding so, so well, he can, uh, you know, come through the group and we, he's still got connects, we, connections. We talked to Tim O'Donnell, you know, at the press conference yeah. and asked him, you know, it's been quite a while since an American has had a drink here at the, uh, at the Ironman World Championship. Yeah. And, you know, I said, is it going to help you having Mark Allen on your side? And he said, absolutely. And Mark has really pushed me, you know, to become this champion. Now, if, if Tim can make, you know, those big uh, improvements on his bike, we know he can run well. Absolutely. So it, it can happen. And oh, so, absolutely. And so the, the questions that remain are, of course, uh, you know, when you're in this early stage of the bike and you've been sitting behind some people and you're riding and you feel good, Fredino's yep. down, he's a little bit scary, so let's get away. Probably what's gone into O'Donnell's head. The other thing is you have to be very careful because it feels easy. It feels oh. easy still, and it sh and you want to be really careful with holding and guarding some of that energy. For, so Tim is doing a cool thing here. We have to wait and see if it's a smart thing because yeah. managing that energy, you, you know what? It, it's still flat, relatively speaking. It's still flat. Yeah. It's still easy. So until we hit, you know, the climbs up. You said the climbs up to Javi. I say the climbs down from Javi. Yeah, that is be. so hard. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, and I mean, and, and as you said, you know, we've got the the best athletes in the world, and they've been riding their bike for less than an hour and a half at this point, right? So, you know, you've got to watch your effort. You can't put too much out there. That's why a lot of these athletes are looking at power meters, uh, talking to the guys from Training Peaks. We're going to talk to them here in a little bit, but talking to them yesterday, you know, they said every time. Uh, you know, the best power file is the one that goes out a little bit easier. And it looks like Rachel Joyce is on the bottom right of our screen right now, looking very, very smooth. Not really sure the context of where she's at right now, uh, but we have a picture of her riding very well. And uh, on the left, we got Frederick Van Leerd uh, putting in his, his time and his effort up at the front of the race. And this is notable right here, bottom right of your picture, yeah. that, that shot of Rachel zooming in. This girl, I believe wow. she can ride better than anyone today. She looks good. Reef is going to be there too. Greg, you're totally right, but very close. This gal right here, she said, you know what? I'm in better shape than I was all of last year. And she got second here last year, won two Ironmans. She's in better shape. She's in an uninterrupted flow of training. She's had an uninterrupted progression. And for me, best thing I've seen, she's lost all her races this year to one girl. She lost to Rennie. She lost to Jody Swallow. Losing is a highly motivating thing. I, I think it's great for her to be in this position, coming in having lost to Marinda. Well, earlier I, in July. Yeah, I tell I you like what. It. Yeah, right now, yeah, you're pretty hot on Joyce this year, and I agree with you. I think she's, you know, <laughs> top three material for sure, and possibly for the win. You know, with Daniela Rife, uh, sorry, Reef and uh, Marinda Carfrey, I think that those three girls are going to be our podium today, Absolutely. perhaps. And um, but uh, when you look at it. Rachel Joyce is pulling Leander Cave, Daniela Reef, and also Liz Blatchford with her. So wow. that's, that's, this Good is the stuff. problem, you know, for the other three girls up front and also poses a threat to Marinda Carfrey, who is sitting six minutes down on our leaders. That's your problem. So these six girls need, want, can be together. We thought they would be. So we will see those girls continue to put time probably on Marinda. Marinda is exceptionally good. She is a two-time champion. She said earlier, I like the number three. Yeah, I like that. I want to <laughs> go for number three. Um, yeah. I think she can. I think she has a very good shot. But right now, the danger is six, maybe seven, really top-notch caliber athletes deciding we want to get away. And I like the, also the change in mentality for Rachel Joyce, Liz Blatchard, who's a little under the radar. These girls have sort of thought, wait a minute, I'm a great runner. So everybody talks about yeah. Marinda because she's course record runner Unbelievable these are great runner. runners so yeah. they, they don't really feel like i've got to have 12 13 14 minutes they're not thinking that they're thinking i'm going to race the best that i can do and my best might bring a 258 marathon coupled with a wicked bike split for i sure. win the race for sure no you're right they've got to you got to plan out uh, your day uh, in all three disciplines and if you don't have a great swim you can't try to make it all up on the bike uh, to get to the front because uh, that's not going to end well uh, we did have an update from uh, our bloggers with kevin mckinnon said guys that I don't know if we, we didn't get the picture of it, but he said we have Andrew Starkovich with 20 second gap on the main field right now. So we're gonna get uh, a picture of that soon, but it looks like you see Freddie Van Leer waiting for someone to pull around, uh, but at the front of the race at this moment. Oh, we just got a good update and thank you uh, to Tim Don, one of our world champ and uh, Ironman winners just tweeted in. He said that we were calling Tim O'Donnell, uh, we were calling Richie Cunningham, Tim O'Donnell. And if we did, we apologize, same uh, Rudy Project helmet, same Trek bike. So if we did that, we apologize. Yeah, for sure. We will have to switch out of that and, and bring it right back down because if Richie is taking his nose into the wind, that is also uncharacteristic for this fellow. He loves to follow one of the most tenacious and fast oh, and tough, I mean, scary good athletes that's out there. He's a rookie a in fighter. Kona, yeah. rookie to the distance. He's, he's in his third Ironman. But if he's taking the lead, man, Richie, you go, man. Oh, he is he is such a fighter, and you know somebody pointed out, uh, you know, on the on the social internet the other day. But this guy's such such a, a legend. Uh, how many different types of races he's excelled at? You know, he was a World Cup racer back in the day, uh, short distance. You know, he's dominated 70.3s. He was a podium finisher at World Championships back in the day, and now to have Richie Cunningham at the World Championships in Kona, uh, pretty cool to put on the Palmares at the end of the day, no matter what happens. But he is a fighter, a tough, tough guy. He's got a lot of miles in his legs. I know he was really nervous coming back doing Ironman Boulder, really put it out there, ended up getting second place to Justin Dare, but um, he'll come here with a little less pressure. Richie had a lot of pressure going into Boulder. He's going to come here to have the experience, and right now we've got an athlete passing on the left uh, with arm warmers or arm That's coolers, Potts. excuse That's me, Potts. and that is Andy Potts coming back to the front, pushing the pace with uh, quite the line of people behind him, but it looks like an athlete right after the pass uh, comes through and is trying to get his turn on the front. Uh, you know, we were talking about 27 athletes and we're all separated by one minute at the early part of the yeah, race. We're still looking at the same 26 athletes wow. now. One is gone. That is Jan Fredino. He is back. He is fixing his flat tire. It won't be too long before he gets back on the bike and starts heading 
back into the front of the race. And then I tell you what, by the look of it, you know, <laughs> this guy's just absolutely flying through the course. The Obviously, moment, we so. would tell you who it is, but we're making <laughs> errors right now. So <laughs> just give us a sec as soon as we know exactly <laughs> who it is. Because the problem is, a lot of times we jump the gun, we expect, we see, we think. But thank you to the viewers at home for not only tweeting in the corrections, we make mistakes too, but also bearing with us. We'll collect this data. This athlete looks very good. We'll figure out who it is, and we will let you know as soon as we get a side angle shot. But guys, remember, it's a volatile race up front. And so, as Welchie just pointed out, 27 guys, another uh, tier athlete we've got here and he's also on the red trek looks like um, Paul you know Matthews, I'm you sorry me. he looks like Paul Matthews I can't see his number but uh, yeah, that's Joe Gambles Joe that Gambles. Joe Gambles. Yes, that's what we got yeah, so we've got the, yeah Tasmanian devil say it say it again we've got this guy he's <laughs> really good and his biking this year oh, is man. on top he is not afraid to throw down the power absolutely and we're noticing it more because his swimming has become much much more consistent than it was in the past and it looks like he's pushing he's getting a little bit of a gap this is an athlete that we used to see you know if it was a punchy course like a vine man or lake stevens be like, watch out for joe gambles that guy can go up a punchy hill really really well but at boulder this year he rode through and dropped everyone on a pancake flat course so his cycling has come full circle and he's able to push uh, across flats and hills and right now he's putting in an effort trying to gap the field and he's he's done so he has a very, very small gap that, that could come together quickly. But And he did this at St. George as well, and I believe he had a gap uh, at the end of the bike ride there. So if I talk about this exact scenario right here, I like what Joe's doing because I love the aggressive race tactics. But I will say is if you race with Ego too early, and, and Joe's very good at racing with Ego, very good at competing. And Ego's a good thing. I say yep. that with positive. If you race with Ego too early, it hurts you. He's making you a break inside of two hours. I mean, inside of 90 minutes. It's early. He's got the guns to do it. But again, maybe just wait. You put yourself out there. You dangle out there ahead. It really hurts. And there's a group of you know, 26 guys for sure. chasing you down. Let, let's give Joe some serious credit for going for it. But an athlete, then, an athlete like this, do you think for him to be able to win the race, does he have to do something dynamic and go off the front? So we're just, you know, that's a great question. We're just getting word that this footage is actually second place. They're saying yeah, that Andrew Joe Starkowitz, is in second. Right? Andrew so, Starkowitz okay. off the front. Yeah, so let's not forget that. Starkowitz yeah. still up the road. Okay, well, good I, stuff. Look, guys, Joe Gambles comes to the islands uh, this week with twice the amount of energy. He's doing the race this week, but he's getting married next week. Pretty cool. well over here. So uh, his whole family is going to be over, you know, attending the wedding uh, of uh, Joe Gambles next weekend. So... The men's race is heating up, but so is our women's race because now we've got a big chase. You know, Daniela Reef is on the move, and yep. so is Leander Cave. Rachel Joyce is up there, Liz Blatchford. But right now, I tell you what, it's uh, all happening because Daniela Reef is now making the move that we expected. Yeah, and as we see, we look at the, the, the men's field on the, op the upper left as they drive away, we can see what kind of gap. Uh, Starkowitz has on the rest of the field, and it, it looks like it's it's growing. It's going to be a, a big one. And right now, uh, we have uh, our woman that we were looking for earlier in the day, number one seventeen, uh, Daniela Reef, and she is uh, she's she's pushing and uh, she looks comfortable. One twelve, and and what we'll say is, you know, this gal, she's going in in in, uh, in true uh, Sato style. Her coach with no aero helmet. Traditionally, he says, forget the aero helmet. I, I mean, I like that logic. I, stay cool. You gain a couple seconds with an aero helmet, but I like this logic. I really do. Here we've got Rachel and Rife. This is it, Reef. Sorry, these girls, these women, man, they're strong, and they are now in tandem. So that is good stuff. I, I love to see this. And again, very smooth. Look at Rachel, very smooth. She got the sleeves covering. Um, and then, you know, the rookie right behind her, just, you know, just driving the pace, Greggy. Yes, uh, driving the pace, absolutely. And uh, as uh, Daniela Reef now is making her way toward the front with Rachel Joyce, uh, your hot favorite there, Michael. Uh, the, she's uh, doing a very good time at the moment, and her wattage is right up there. But Rachel Joyce here, as we can see, is just really pushing. Got a beautiful position on the bike right now, and a very, very good uh, cyclist indeed. But Daniela Reef is coming to the front. We did have a uh, chance to catch up with her during the week, and uh, listen to this. You can race safe, but then you come to the, line, uh, to the finish, and you start thinking, well, could I have gone a little bit faster there? Or, you know, it's, and I don't like that. I want to um, come to the finish without regrets. That's kind of, you know, the, I think what you need, like it's a world championship. So you have to take risk to win because if you go on safe, it's, um, yeah, I don't, it's not my way of racing. 
Daniela Reef may be new to Kona, but she's not new to winning races, that's for sure. Daniela Reef from Switzerland, 70.3 world champion just five weeks ago in Mont Tremblant, Canada. She is having a great race today. She also won three Ironman races over the last three months. Absolutely on fire. And Matt, you got some uh, stats for us? Yeah, we got some men's updates. Uh, you know, as we were able to get back to them, we got some updates from the guys uh, in the blog area with Kevin McKinnon. Uh, we had two men, pro men, stop in the penalty tent on the That's way up. Right. That was Jeremy Drickowitz and Daniel Montana. We don't know. We're not clear whether or not it was a stop for four minutes or if it was a stop and go. It looks like this is Andrew Starkowitz on the front. Uh, he's in the lead. Other big cyclists making moves. Sebastian Keeley, Marino Van Honrecker, and Luke McKenzie are now only two and a half minutes down from the front of the race, which is over two minutes uh, that they've gained in the last 10 miles, which is quite an effort. And last but not least, Jan Ferdino has got his flat tire fixed and uh, reportedly is moving up to the group at a pretty quick rate. But right now, Andrew Starkowitz, this is what he wants to, this is what he wants to see today. He wants to see open road and NBC cameras uh, up close because that knows he, he then he knows he's the man everybody's watching. Yeah, and the start. race is uh, the race has a you know great amount of uh, officials out there making sure that the camera guys don't get in the way nor do any other vehicles on course today. But Starkey came in here last year as a little bit of a rookie and he did learn a lot about the race. We did have a chance to catch up with him and this is what he had to say. Race here in Kona last year was uh I mean, it was a learning experience. Uh, I wasn't 100% healthy coming into the race, uh, just physically, and then I got sick on the bike, and it w then I definitely wasn't 100% healthy, and just, it took me a long time to figure out what the issue was, and once I figured out what the issue was, I was able to uh, r r make something of the race uh, and, and make it to the finish line. It wasn't, uh, it was an embarrassing performance considering the fitness I had, but uh, I made it to the finish line. Well, Starkey's going to give it a big dig this year. He's a world record Ironman bike split. Is 404.39 the Ironman Florida race. Won 2013 Ironman 70.3 Muncie last year. He did finish 21st here last year, guys, and he had a good race. And 31 is his number today. Represents the United States. Starkey, is he going to break Norman Stadler's bike record today? It's probably pretty soft conditions from what I can tell so far. So he's on his way. But again, is that the goal? Yes. Is it a smart goal? We're not sure. <laughs> this guy has done his thing at Ironman Florida. Someone asked me earlier, what can he run? Well, my thing is Ironman Florida is a very hard course because it's an Ironman, but it's cool. It's flat when you ride really hard, i.e. 404 or 402 yeah. on the Ironman Florida course. It doesn't soften your legs for the run. When you ride under 418 on the Ironman Hawaii course, yeah. it softens the legs <laughs> so much. It I mean, also takes a little bit of the juice that you need, the fluid, everything. So it, that's hard. It does. I, I would say I think riding a 404 on any course is going to take it off your legs a little bit. And right now, the course, uh, we got the Blue Bicycles uh, bike course, and Andrew Starkowitz is, is tearing it up right now. But can he break the record? He probably can. He has the ability to for sure. Last year, he said he had some nutrition issues, so that's why he wasn't able to go as hard. But we're getting word from the course that we do have strong winds coming down from Hubby over 20 miles an hour from right to left, the racers right to left. Oh, wow. So that's going to be uh, off the coast. So I uh, love it. Okay, as the athletes now go past Mauna Kea Resort, they're only a couple of miles now away yeah. from the town of Kauai High. Now, after they get to Kauai High, guys, they make a right-hand turn. When they go up the 19, they've got 19 miles to Harvey where they turn around and come back down the hill, Matt, as you were saying, with a crosswind right to left. Now, Michael, you and I very well know that it comes across that right-hand side, but it doesn't just, you know, just gust. It absolutely howls, and it's a very difficult to hold onto your handlebars up front. And, uh, you know, when, when you have a water bottle up front with a straw out the front, that's probably the safest way to take in nutrition as well. I think so. I think it's brilliant. People that don't use it, hey, they have their method. But I think drinking without having to take your hands at the air bar is very useful. So what you'll see in there, it's channels. So there's little humps. There's little mountain humps. So yeah. you have little valleys, tiny valleys that run perpendicular to the roads you're on. So when you have those little humps that folks at home can visualize, those are little air, little wind tunnels, so little air shoots, and it comes down at you. So a disadvantage to being first for Starkowitz is he doesn't see ahead and know when they're coming. Every Everyone behind him yeah. can look up the road, and you see an athlete literally get blown from the right to the left on your way up, opposite obviously coming home. But it's a nice little thing. You know, when you race this race, you look ahead, you say, here it comes, here it comes, relax. It's my turn yeah. to get the side win. So you can really use those people up the road to your advantage. 
just checking in here, Matt, I see Jody Swallow, and I love talking about this uh, women's race again because we do have such good camera shots of them. So yeah. I'll just focus in again. Jody Swallow, at this point anyway, for her two hours, 22 minutes into the race, she's still looking every bit as good, every bit as fluid, every bit as smooth as she did when we first saw her. So Absolutely. Jody Swallow may have had a little bit of emotional turmoil earlier from whatever <laughs> happened. She yelled at others, she yeah. screamed, she hollered. She may have had that, we'll find out why but she's got it under control now. Yeah, one thing she has is intensity for sure, and she uh, you know, expressed that there earlier, but right now she's using that intensity to, to motor through the bike course, and we do see that some women are moving through. Rachel Joyce and Daniela Reef and Carolyn Steffen, uh, Liz Blatchford all riding within 12 seconds of each other, and they're only a minute 40 down now from Jody Swallow, so they're making up some ground. Those girls are working together, and uh, you know we might see them uh, come together and more likely when we see that those big wins i mean that's when the gaps start coming down or coming apart um andrew starkwitz is going to love it when he gets to that windy section in heavy well these athletes are looking very comfortable out on course right now and sugoi they launched a new technology in their apparel line that is pretty sweet yes literally sweet as in xylitol jamie williams and kelly alding has sport the latest in their sugar technology You know, it's been interesting watching our Ironman partnership grow over the last few years. It started with a small offering of kind of event custom apparel, and it was so popular with the athletes. We had such a positive response that, that evolved into a co-branded line. The merchandise sells out at almost every event, and for us as a brand, just to see people racing in our apparel, and every time we go to a race, we see more and more people racing in, in our apparel, so it's been a really positive experience for us. For this year, we're launching Ice Fill, which is a new fabric technology that incorporates xylitol, which is an actual sugar, natural sweetener, that's woven into the fabric. And we're wearing them in our headbands, that's why we're wearing these. <laughs> but it cools you off, so as you sweat and perspire, the moisture is wicked across the product and it actually cools your skin. So for triathletes, especially in these conditions where it's so hot, you want to be able to have that cooling effect over the body and it actually helps lower the temperature of approximately three degrees. We also do accessories with ice fill. So the covering on your arms is really critical um, for a couple reasons. Sun protection. So ice fill technology also incorporates a 50 UV protection. So when you're out there in the saddle or running for those long hours, you know that you're going to get protected. We have it also on your knees because that's another high impact for the sun and on the top of your head. So coming through your helmet or as you're running, you get protected, you stay cool, and overall better performance. We're really excited about seeing the athletes on race day this year. We have Apollo Ono through the Chocolate Milk program. We've got Jen Aitor from Women's Health Magazine. And then we have our own group of brand champion athletes who we've been with them since the beginning of the year, building apparel for them. So it's a really great way to kind of end the story, end the season, and, and see what all of the hard work has paid off for. I think the biggest motivation in Ironman is the challenge, to see if you can do it and how well you can do it. Freedom, it's my escape. Just learn so much about yourself and how you deal with challenges. Mixing it up with other athletes and trying to perform as well as I possibly can. It's something you start and you never want to stop. I was really, really nervous. I was on like two hours sleep. Nervous, scared, exciting. Just every single like worry and anxiety I probably could have had before the race. I remember thinking like, oh, I can't do this, I can't do this, it's too much.
When I look out into the ocean, I see my playground. Determination. Discipline. My second wind. Whatever you're building, build it with chocolate milk. Nutrients to refuel, protein to rebuild, backed by science. I'm Marinda Carfre and you're watching Iron Man Live. Sponsors of today's race are Cyclone, the official bike marketplace of the Ironman World Championship. Newton, the official run course sponsor. Tax, the official cycle mounting partner of Ironman. Memorial Herman, the official Ironman Sports Medicine Institute and Ironmanstore.com. Official Ironman merchandise with free shipping on orders over $100. Matt Liado to go and meet Donard at the swim exit. And here we go. We're looking to the, the right. We got uh, Meredith Kessler on the back, uh, the bottom right side of our screen, pushing well. And uh, the camera on the upper left is catching up. Look how much the uh, moto has to accelerate to catch back up to Andrew Starkowitz. He has taken the right-hand turn and is net now heading up to Havi. And this is where he's really going to push, uh, push the power to the pedals. And if he wants to get that bike course record, that is what he's shooting for. This is a very important uh, time of the course to be able to make up a lot of time on the the other athletes. Okay, the 2014 Ironman World Championship presented by GoPro continues on the beautiful Big Island off Hawaii. The 2014 edition today, we are on the Blue Cycles bike course here and uh, we are presented by GoPro. Andrew Starkowitz, like you were saying, Matt, is really pushing the pedal to the middle at the moment. Now he's heading up 19 miles, very steady progression uphill all the way to the turnaround. Harvey is the place. Now, Harvey, believe it or not, has you know 12 different microclimates. Today we were showing 40% chance of rain. They may get a little bit of rain up in Harvey, may not get a bit of rain, but we know one thing's for sure. There is a screaming um, crosswind going across from Upolu Airport, which is just behind Har Harvey there. And now as they approach that area, it's gonna start getting windy up there. Starkowitz now is out to a one minute and five second lead. Then it's 125 on Armorelli. And also Jan Fredino has dropped right off that group as we know he got that uh, flat tire a little bit before, but Andy Potts is still in there as well. So Andrew Starkowitz now is in front of Joe Gambles, um, also, Freddie Van Lieta and Andy Potts, Igor Amarelli from Brazil, still in there. But here we go with uh, Starkowitz really stomping on those pedals going uphill, Mike. Yeah, he is. And so this section that you described, it's 19 miles. The first 12 miles, it's a it's an up-down action. So you go up. He's obviously doing that right now. You crest the hill. You can power this section, absolutely. You can, you can kind of just crest.